All right, everybody, it's me, Roku, here with a Season 14 updated Darius top lane matchup tier list. Now, for those of you who have been with the channel for a long time, I usually make one of these every single year at the start of the season after playing a bunch of games to see how the matchups have changed. Now, mind you, I haven't played every single one of these matchups, so my knowledge may not be as up to date, but on the other end, it doesn't really matter what they change because most of these matchups are going to be laned until you have like first item, like the lane is decided by then. So no item change or whatever they make that like really <laughs> matters. So yeah, I'm just going to go in an alphabetic order and we're going to list them in this tier list from very easy to unplayable. I'm going to real quick just explain the tiers for those of you who are new to this style of video. Unplayable is a matchup where you essentially have no hope. Even if the jungler ganks you and gets kills for you, the way that champion is designed makes it so that you can't snowball, you can't get anything, you can't even get prio, even if you have kills up on that champion. Even if the person playing that champion is completely headless and handless, as long as they have two fingers, one on each hand, I mean, they will be able to beat you, okay? Insanely difficult. These are the kind of champions where... It's very much favored in their direction, and if they play it optimally, then it's not that winnable. But it's different from unplayable in that if you do get help from a jungler, or if you do know how to outplay mechanically that specific champion, or if the person you're fighting isn't particularly good at the champion they're playing, you can sort of just beat them and do your typical things of carrying the game, having prio you know, 1v9ing, all that stuff. It's just not as likely because if they do play it properly, you're gone. Enemy favored. This is essentially a skill matchup that is favored towards the enemy in that it's ultimately a skill matchup and the better player will win, but the enemy has more tools to work with. Up next, we have a skill matchup. This is a matchup where it's basically almost balanced. The better player will win every single time. Here we have Darius Favorite, which is just the opposite of enemy favorite in that it is a skill matchup, but Darius will win most of the time. Very easy is essentially just free elo, right? It's like a matchup that is unplayable, but for the enemy, okay? Where the enemy can't really do too much to be you or whatever like that. So let's get right into it. Aatrox. Aatrox definitely used to be one of the like more annoying bruiser kind of matchups last season but i think he has significantly gotten say easier to play against now this might be because i'm just playing against like lower elo atroxes maybe the atroxes that might are getting worse but it sort of feels like he can't just drain tank off of you anymore and he's more it's more reliable to put him down right maybe Darius is op right now i think he kind of is maybe could be nerfed but whatever right it's just He's not as difficult to play against as last season. Now, if the Aatrox does play perfectly, there's not really too much you can do. Because by a perfectly played Aatrox, I mean an Aatrox who doesn't waste his abilities. Because if Aatrox just uses his abilities intelligently, there isn't really an opening you can use to kill him, provided he's going to ignite. Because say it's level 3, and he just uses his Qs and he hits the sweet spot on, on all three of the Qs on you. Then he will do enough damage and heal enough to straight kill you with a second rotation once he get like, once he like gets it back, right? So if he knows what he's doing, and if he lands everything, he will just straight kill you. But if you are able to dodge some stuff, if he's not taking ignite, which is a big mistake the Aatrox players kind of make sometimes, if you're able to recall and get some armor, some anti-heal, whatever you need to beat this guy up then you can kind of just steamroll him and kill him. Ghost usage of this matchup, matchup is so crucial, be, be, English, right? because Ghost allows you to dodge every single one of his Qs, and more crucially, his W. Aatrox's W is basically a very underrated ability in terms of importance, because the W sets up every single one of his Qs. So what you really want to do against Aatrox is try your best to either dodge the W, if he wastes it, go in with your ghost when he does waste it. Or at worst, you kind of want to just run out of it to the side when he does catch you with it, okay? 
In terms of buys, I think armor is more important than anti-heal, especially since, I guess it depends on the Aatrox, but some of them go for Eclipse, right? Which I think is the better build, though I'm not too sure you'd have to ask in Aatrox OTP. I just think that Eclipse has to do way more damage as Aatrox, which heals you more, and the shield is really kind of OP in my opinion. But if the Aatrox goes Eclipse, then that anti-heal isn't going to be very useful, but that um, extra armor is going to reduce his damage so he will heal less. But putting all that aside, it is utmost important to just dodge his abilities. If you if he, if he lands them, you die. If you dodge them, you kill him. It's basically as simple as it gets. I'd say it's slightly his favorite, but I'd leave it in skill matchup, by the way. Akali. I'd say Akali is an enemy favorite matchup. Akali on paper has every single tool she has to deal with Darius. And... Akali also has one of the strongest level 6 power spikes in the entire game. I think it's straight up the strongest level 6 power spike because level 6 fundamentally changes Akali from being kind of a nuisance to just straight up being able to full health kill you if, say, if she lands her shuriken, maybe a Q and an auto attack, then she can just take that E shuriken, kick into you, and then just ult W, you can't fight her back, and then just execute you straight off that, okay? Akali does an insane amount of damage with her ultimate. Your big window of trying to kill the Akali is essentially before she gets her ultimate. If you can kill her before then, then there is a case to be made for you being able to put up a fight against her ultimate, okay? Because if you're both even, or God forbid she's actually killed you once before she has her ultimate available, then you have to be very careful and just watch your step. Get hit by her E, if you don't trade your Qs against her Qs properly, she will just straight up take that E, ult into you, and kill you. It's insane how much damage she does. And it's kind of insane, but it really doesn't matter how much magic resistance she bu you, you buy. She just does so much damage, she just kills you through it anyway. Okay? The main thing that kind of I think is important in this matchup is, first off, you have to be try to you have to try to be aggressive early on, okay? Akali's level one isn't that good. Like it's good at trades, but in an all-in situation, you just completely roll over her. So if you can get like a like a W on her, then you can most certainly kill her. I think it's safer to go with Q trades, but W is always an option, right? Um a cheese you can do <laughs> is go lethal tempo and then just rank hook level one. Stand in your ranged minions, and when she tries to attack the melees or whatever, you hook her into your your ranged minions and just all attack her to death, and it works. But I think I don't think you can do this anymore because they are gonna love lethal tempo next patch. So yeah, all in all, be super aggressive earlier on, and try your best to get kills. Another thing that is very important is to respect her W. Okay, her W essentially gives her invulnerability. Aside from just your Q, right? Because there is his all attacks and his ultimate and his W. It's all point and click stuff. And her shroud can just straight up cancel them because when she goes invis, you don't have vision of her anymore. And that is like the one thing that consistently cancels Darius' abilities, no vision. So unless you're about to straight up kill her or you're trying to just chase her through the W smoke in a way where she doesn't get away. You don't want to stay in it for too long. You want to just run as far away from it as possible to kind of force her into a bad situation because if she gets out of her W, she's exposed, okay? She has no kind of protection ability to kind of save her from you. And if you get out of her W, she loses her ability to DPS off of you because in her W, she can just go for QR attack, QR attack, QR attack as much as she wants, and there's nothing you can do about it. But if you leave her shroud... She goes for that, and you can buy back with a W, a Q, R tax, ultimate, all you want, right? So you definitely want to take the fight away from her shroud, right? Now, the bad part is, this kind of allows her to just escape. But, <laughs> trust me when I tell you that, it's better than just straight dying to her, okay? And also, another important ability to use in this matchup is Flash. Because Flash can be an insane game changer. If you're kind of getting used to how Akali's use their ultimates and stuff, you can straight up just flash out of the way of their ultimate, and better yet, just flash Q them so it hits them. Like, if you know that Akali's ult range, and you know that, oh, she wants to dash through me to do damage to me, you can just straight up Q flash that and basically kill her, right? Like, Q flash, 
W ult or something like that, depending on how many stacks she has on her and how much, you know, when you want to ult. But yeah, so flash usage is important. Um, early game aggression is important. And not playing into her W is very important. And also, don't disrespect her E. That's one thing that I find a lot of players doing, and honestly, kind of myself too, because her E does way more damage than you think it does. Okay, it, it does like 200, 300 on its own. So it's like, <laughs> the chunk from her E could be just enough to have her one-shot you with Ignite. Okay, so really respect her damage. This champion, doesn't matter how many times you've killed her, you could have killed her four times, and she will do annoying amounts of damage. It's kind of like the thing with AP champions in this game, AP bruisers, that just straight up deal damage for free, even if they're behind. So, yeah. Camille. Camille is very much Darius' favorite, but it's a little weird because essentially speaking, Camille got indirectly nerfed by the wall, by, by the map getting larger because she can't hook shot consistently. And as consistently, and her role in the game is so different now than it used to be years ago because Camille used to be like, oh, she has a weak laning phase, but she, she scales into a monster. Right now, she basically just exists to set up ganks for her jungler. Like, she can't really lane that well. She can't trade that well into a lot of champions. And it's so funny and sad at the same time. When I fight a Camille player, and she's doing like these five techniques, mechanics, dodging and everything, and I just press Q and I out-trade her. Right? It's like this champion is not good at laning. This champion is only good at setting up ganks for their jungler, for her jungler. So... It's a sad state for a champion, but this isn't really a match if you should have too much trouble with at all. I'd wager I just put it in very easy even. Because if you're playing high elo, then it is kind of difficult because in high elo, junglers will know to gank top. So you might get camped and the Camille will definitely be a nuisance every single one of the ganks due to like sheer range. But if you're playing low elo where junglers don't really care too much, Right, they kind of just go where the wind takes them. They don't plan out their ganks like, oh, my top, top lane is weak. I need to help them. Then Camille is very easy. I'll put it in very easy for you guys. But yeah, in terms of mechanics, um, the one big mechanic you need to know is to hook her out of her hook shot. There are two parts of Camille's hook shot: the part where she shoots the hook into the wall, and the part where she herself like moves. Right, she, she shoots the hook, and then she moves. If you hook. And it lands when she's shooting the hook the movement will override your hook but if you hook her as she is moving then you will cancel it and the way to time this that i've found is the second you see that she hook shots and it's about to hit the wall then you press e and luckily the way this works is that as long as you have decent reaction speed and your mouse is on the camille the second you hear the hookshot sound and you press E, your reaction time should be enough of a delay to time it properly, right? As long as it's like average, right? If you're not too fast or too slow, then if you're too fast or too slow, it might be a problem. But if you just have average reaction time or maybe I have too slow, I don't care, whatever. But just press E when you hear it and most of the time you'll hook her out of it unless she's hooking into very far away walls. Now, a few more things to consider. If you get Camille in your melee range, she's basically dead, okay? Because Camille really doesn't want to get into melee range with you as you can't just cancel her hook shot, right? But one thing's crucial, when you're in melee range and she still has her hook shot, don't use Q. You might, well, like, why, you might ask? Because when you use Q, it's 0.75 seconds that she could use to just hook shot out and you can't hook to cancel her hook shot. And it's a trap that a lot of Darius players fall into and give Camille like a free escape because a good Camille is going to watch out for that and use the opportunity to not only dodge the Q but just straight up live, okay? So don't Q and give her a free escape, all right? With a hook shot, cancel it, and then go for an EQ combo, land it, and then you can just kill her, right? Um, one more thing, you don't really want to let her auto attack the wave because when she cues the wave, she gets move speed and it allows her to land her W, right? It's sustain, it's poke. You don't want her to land those for free, right? 
And the thing is, it doesn't do that much damage to the wave. So if you Q for her W, and even if you land it and she lands it, it kind of helps her out a bit more because your Q is just going to push the lane. And when you're in Camille's side of the lane, it's just better for her because, you know, junglers, ganks, all that good stuff, or bad stuff. So it's better to just sidestep this issue altogether and just not get hit by our Ws. And the easy way, right-click back or, like, you know, um, make sure she doesn't, like, get on the minions them her themselves. Like, try to zone her off with Qs or whatever. Don't let her all attack them. And when she goes for W, just you can just walk out. Kind of like how people walk out of Darius Qs. So, yeah. Items-wise, you don't really need to build anything specific. She's just, you know, just kill her. Like, if you lose to Camille, <laughs> it's Jovra. Cho'Gath. Hmm. I'd say a very, very, very well-played Cho'Gath can be somewhat of a challenge. But in any situation, just Cho'Gath is, like pray to Darius. It's just that I'll put it into Darius favor because he's not a matchup that you can farm very easily because as long as the Cho'Gath isn't a moron, he will eventually get to a point where killing him either takes so much time that someone on the enemy team will just come and kill you with him, right? Like, it's just not worth it to attack him, waste your summoner spells on trying to kill him because he's just such a meathead, right? Like, his health... It kind of just stacks up earlier on, right? And because it the health kind of spikes early and health specifically English specifically counters flat damage through health. Okay, <laughs> okay. I don't know what I, what's wrong with me. It is three a.m. Because health specifically counters flat two damage, it's kind of not even worth it to ult him, right? You're basically looking to get stacks off of him and then use that to kill his team. And Cho'Gath's silence can be very annoying in team fights because it can't just shut you down and stop you from going for flash cues and stuff. And his ultimate is an execute, right? And guess what champion is at his most dangerous when he's at low health? Darius, right? That's when you do the most damage. That's when you have your stacks. It's, it's just, it's your most dangerous point, And he effectively just is able to kill you instantly during that. So... Not in terms of lane, but in terms of how you can mess up your game outside of lane. I'd say Cho'Gath is Darius. Like, he's a bit of an annoyance. But if we're purely talking about the lane, he's very easy. I'm going to put him here. Because like his outside of lane interference isn't something that can be ignored. I'd say Darius versus Darius. I mean, if you're playing blind pick, first off, stop. <laughs> Play draft pick. But, um... Yeah, I don't really have to say anything here. The first one who, who, who starts to land their stacks wins. Try your best to hook to dodge the enemy Darius's Q. And for the love of God, don't miss your Q. Okay? Dr. Mundo. Dr. Mundo is relatively Darius favored. But it's kind of the same situation with Cho'Gath. Because when they removed Divine Sunderer and left in Sundered Sky... It kind of made it more difficult to face these kinds of meathead health builders. Because you couldn't just get this one magic item that just, like... It's like a substitute for Triforce or Strybreaker, and then just build normally. No, you have to build Sundered Sky, and then you have to build these other items. Because Sundered Sky, on its own, doesn't have the stats Darius needs. And by stats, I mean the attack speed. Darius needs that attack speed to get stuff done. And if you're just building Sundered Sky and going into Sterics and stuff, you can be... You'll be a meathead for sure but it can severely hamper your ability to carry games, especially in games when there's a lot of CC, because there's a lot of CC. Yes, you'll be tankier because you're able to all attack and get the heals off, but when you're stunned, you can't all attack anything, right? And if you're flashing into one shot some ADC, you want that auto attack to be like snappy and do a lot of burst damage to one shot. Them. That's why Triforce is like, sure, the best option for Darius above anything else. Sundered so Sky basically pigeonholes you into just being a brain dead frontline meathead where you can only crush backlines when you're super fed if you're not you're kind of going to struggle a bit right and you're forced to build it if you want to kill these meatheads but i think it's just too much of a waste of time you're better off just ignoring them and building for killing their teammates letting your adc kill these guys and besides if you're fed in lane which you should be because these matches are easy then you should have no problems just mauling them to death I think Mundo is a bit easier than Cho'Gath because Mundo doesn't really have that kind of way to annoy you in the game 
all he does is just throw hatchets and zone you, kind of. But if you, like, he can only zone you if he's straight up just stalking you and following you around the map to just Q hatchet you to make sure you don't get to the team fight, right? If he's doing that, then yeah, he's quite annoying. But doing that requires vision and a lot of dedication. And he would rather just go help his team and stuff, right? Which means that... Most Mundos won't do that unless you're split pushing against him and then he will just follow you and do that. So, yeah. Um, not really a nuisance outside of the lane. And honestly, he's a very good target for five stacks. And he's a great tank to fight because he's not like the other tanks in that he has no crowd control. So you can just five stack off of him and just slaughter the entire enemy backline and he can do nothing to stop you. No slows. No art attack slows, no CC, no stuns, nothing, okay? He's just a big meat head. Now, it can be difficult for your backline to kill him, but I don't think that's too much of a problem. Just if you kill the enemy backline, you just come back and kill him too. Now, for lane, um, the one thing that, by the way, for Mundo specifically, I have made a video. I think it was like two years ago or so, but if you look it up, Roku, Darius, Mundo, Wild Review or something like that, Mundo matchup, it should be like a... It's like a short video on like my modern sort of four hour videos where I just straight up go in depth on how to beat Mundo in lane. Okay. So if you like a whole video on it, go watch that. But on its own, there is one thing to keep in mind above all, dodge his Qs. Now the thing is, all of Mundo's damage practically is just his Qs. If he can't hit them, he can't do anything to you. Now what's the most consistent way of dodging his cues, hiding behind your minions. If you're hiding behind your minions, Mundo can never land his hatches on you. And the thing is, it's one of those buggy skill shots, not buggy, but quote unquote skill shots in that it's skill shot, but if you bug it enough to be close enough to the enemy, then we'll just morph on them and hit anyway. Where if you hide behind one minion and he curves the hatchet next to that minion, but not at it, it might just land on you. So if you wanna be safe, you want to hide behind two minions, not just one, where, like, the minion's too small to cover your entire hitbox, right? So, you want to hide behind your minions, and you essentially want to only go in when he's trying to attack the minions to farm. This kind of makes it so that there's a natural state of the lane where he's just, like, miles away, queuing the wave, and you're farming with your auto attacks. And that is honestly how it should be, right? And he walk if he walks up, you just straight kill him, right? Because... When he walks up and you do like an RWQ combo and you're still careful to stay behind your minions, you can kind of just ghost and mess him up. And ghost makes it very easy to dodge his cues, right? Very easy. You can also use hook. And like this is the kind of thing that works exclusively against low elo mundos. But if you hook a mundo, they will just brain dead run at the canister. They'll just straight up run at the canister. And the funny part is the canister is... Never particularly where they want to be in that, oh, I want to be near my turret, Darius is running at me. It's like to the side. And what this does is by hooking them and the canister landing in a rough spot, you're kind of making them stay in the fight longer than they should, which gives you more of an opportunity to go for kills. So definitely try that if you're low rank. Um, dodge his cues, go for fights, trades, or whatever when he tries to alter the lane. And if you're having problems with a matchup, you can go anti-heal. But the thing is, when he start with, when he starts like tanking up, because he gets flat health from ulting, your anti-heal isn't gonna matter. He's just straight up gonna survive your damage anyway. So my perspective is, let's say that the enemy has another healer, then get the anti-heal. But if it's just the Mundo, right? Unless he's fed, you really don't need to bother. Okay, you can just chill and play to kill his team. This is how it is with a lot of tanks nowadays. Like, tankiness scales up so crazy quickly because ADCs deal so much damage now and they deal magic damage too, which means that anybody who just doesn't have some sort of direct anti-tank percentage max health true damage type stuff, any champion who doesn't have that just can't kill tanks at all, okay? So... It's just another case of, oh, the lane is easy, or you can get fed. You are going to be using this guy to stack off of the enemy team, but you're not going to be looking into just getting 10 kills and snowballing if he's smart. If he's dumb, I mean, if any of these champs are dumb, they 
just straight up die to you anyway. I'm not gonna do Fiddle. He's not a top laner. Fiora. I'd say Fiora is a skill matchup in the highest ranks. But in lower ranks, I guess it's kind of Fiora favorite, but not really, because in lower ranks, Darius isn't playing properly either. I'll put skill matchup, but it's definitely f it's definitely been feeling easier. But it could be the same thing as Aatrox in that I'm just not facing good Fiora players. And that's very likely the case because I'm only playing at like 200 LP right now. And that's like not good. And trust me, p players feel worse. I feel like I shouldn't be in this elo, but I'm just crushing everything. So it's like, I don't know, is there a SOP? Am I getting better? Whatever, right? But okay, so Fiora is a kind of champion where to really beat her, you got to know directly how her kit works. Fortunately, I've made an in-depth video on this matchup specifically, not just like a like a VOD review, but just a specific thing where I talk about this matchup and all of its details. So I think the video is called Darius's Worst Matchups. That video includes a bunch of other matchups as well, so that you can get a better idea. It includes like a vein and stuff, Riven. And I talk about her in that video. But to put it simply, first off, find out her, her vital spawn so that you can better predict where they're going to end up and better kind of kite them. Because you really don't want to give Fiora vitals, okay? You really don't want to give her vitals. Her vitals are like... Okay, so Darius's Q is to Darius what Fiora's vitals are to Fiora, in that they're your kind of... I might have lost the situation, but if I just do this correctly enough, I can just brute force win it, okay? If Fiora can land enough Qs... She can win almost any situation, okay? It heals her, it gives her more move speed, and does percentage health to damage. So really watch out when your vitals are facing her. You can drop your vitals, but I feel like this is only a temporary solution because the second you drop the vitals, she's going to wait it out, and then the good vital for her will just spawn. So it's not like that much of a difference anyway, right? In my opinion, you really just got to look at... Like, you gotta take good all-ins, essentially, right? In terms of things to avoid, right? You wanna avoid basically revealing all four of your vitals to her or leaving them exposed when she's ulting you. When she's ulting you, you wanna run up against a flat-ish wall and just stand right up, right up next to it. A flat wall is kind of a necessity because what Fuhrer can do is she can kind of bug the vital, right? By just kind of curving into it a little. So you really don't want to give her that opportunity to just still get the vital, even though you're holding it to the wall, okay? Second, do not ult her repost, all right? It's not a good idea, right? You lose a ton of damage. And the thing is, unless it's pretty deep into the fight, where she's about to die anyway, and you're just ulting, so okay, let's just ult... Get the repository so I can W killer. Unless it's that kind of position, you gotta be very careful with when you ult. And even more crucial of a mistake would be to get your hook blocked by her repost. If the Fiora is okay, there are two types of Fioras, right? The brain dead ones and the good ones. The brain dead Fioras will just straight up use their repost aggressively. They'll, they'll just straight up dash towards you and repost. Or the slightly less brain dead Fioras will block your Q with her repost. Now, those Fioras are easy to deal with because they're just giving away their most valuable tool against you in the beginning of the fight. So if you just get some clever footwork in there and avoid her vitals, it's simply just a matter of landing your abilities. And again, you know, she's already using your Q here to fight you. You can just order her to death. This is the second she Qs, you can just Q her, ghosts up, you're able to land it because of your ghost, etc., etc., etc. It's only a matter of um, landing your abilities and then not giving your easy vitals. But if she's a good Fiora player, she will try to learn how you use your hook and then try to get used to it and then surprise you and then stun you. This is what good Fiora players do, okay? So against that, I heavily recommend using hook in situations where, like, you wouldn't use it, okay? Because just having that stun in there is very much useful. Let's say that, um... I don't know, you're running up to a Fiora, right? And you just got a hook range after chasing her. If you hook, she might predict it and stun you. And only do this if she's good enough. So what you can do is employ a bunch of tricks. So trick number one, 
that I think is kind of funny is you hook, but you try to miss her on purpose so that she reposts, but she doesn't stun you. And you come out of your hook earlier than she does. So you can just finish the hook and then just keep chasing her down. And she's standing still, which lets her, you, you kind of just catch up to her, right? And then you can time your ultimate to land after finishes, stuff like that. You can try to use control three dance because the dance, the dance animation kind of looks like there is tossing his Q for a hook. So you can kind of trick her with it. Or what you can do, and this is what kind of good but somewhat inexperienced for your players fall to, is if you have four stacks in the Fiora, you can do hook, or attack, ult. And what this lets you do is it essentially allows you to land your ultimate on the enemy, get that five stacks damage out consistently, guaranteed, okay? This is a trick that's useful against basically every single champion that has a button of invulnerability or like shield or something. Because if you're hooking someone, they're stunned. And if you have good enough attack speed, you can do all attack and ult during the stun. Okay? So if someone's at four stacks and they're within range to die from your five stack ultimate after that one all attack, you can definitely go for this combo and mess them up. And Fiora is one of the targets they want to go for with this combo. Overall, it's a very skill matchup. You can go Bramble Vest, Tobbies, but I feel like you really want to do that against the good Fiora that you're losing into, okay? And now, don't take this as like, oh, I'm uh, I'm not going to lose to Fiora. I'm better than them. Don't, don't like ego things, okay? If a Fiora is beating you up, you guys just snap out of it and be like, okay, I need Bramble Vest here or else I'm going to get my <clears throat> ran in, okay? So it's like, you really gotta just understand when something is too hard for you and try your best to mitigate it with items like defensive items like Bramble Vest, for example. So, ultimately, a very hard skill matchup. Gangplank. Ugh. If a Gangplank player plays it really well, it's an insanely difficult matchup. But fortunately for you guys, aside from like high elo one tricks or just pro players, Nobody plays Gangplank that well in top lane, in that they're sloppy, they don't kite well, they don't combo their barrels well, or they put their barrel too forward so you can get to them and kill them before he can get kill them. Right? There's a lot of mistakes that bad Gangplanks make they can use to just absolutely steamroll them, okay? But generally speaking, you really don't want to get hit by Gangplank's like, poke, okay? Because in all-ins, Gangplank is very killable. And he's not a champion that's very difficult to get into an all-in, in that when his barrel is just freshly destroyed, that's a really huge opening for you to just ghost up and just hook him and kill him, okay? The thing is, if you're poked down to half health and he has ignite and is passive enabled, you're just going to die in two seconds. It's not going to be an all-in, it's just going to be you running in and getting yourself killed. So, big, big thing is to conserve your health. So that when you do get that hook, you can mess him up. Now his barrels, you really wanna kill his barrels as much as you can, okay? If it's a two health, the barrel, it's a three, right? Three, two, one. If it's a two health, you can go for an R attack W and then kill it faster than he can expect to queue it. But if you do this consistently, he'll get used to it and just queue early, right? So you, you wanna just switch things up in case he's a bot and he just <laughs> falls for the same thing over and over again, right? Gangplank's barrels, are his damage if you have if if you have the choice between or attacking him or or attacking his barrel to destroy it hit his barrel okay because if he lands that barrel he doesn't just get the barrel damage on you he gets the slow on you he gets move speed which lets him very easily just open the gap up between you two and open you up to more barrels and more cues and he also gets his fire passive enabled again so if he has that one activated on you already, and he hits the barrel, he's going to get another one. And it's just free two damage that you're giving him by giving him free barrels. So if you have the choice or the ability, hit his barrels. If you do, he deals zero damage, okay? I'd say Tobbies is going to do them into this matchup, not just because, like, first off, his barrels ignore a lot of armor, but we're mainly getting it because we kind of want the move speed to be able to hook him. You can cheese Swifties, and <laughs> I hate to say that it has worked sometimes. And it's really good because if you're good at your movement, you can avoid his barrels with it too. Because right? if he puts a barrel on you, 
and it's just barely on you you can just dodge out of it or move out of it before he activates it right so it's very much like a cheese thing if you're confident in your movement ability swifties is an option in this lane but the thing about swifties is that it's like a it's a risky investment in that if you're going to use your move speed properly yeah sure go for it but if you can't use your move speed properly then you're better off with a tank boots like Merc Treads or Tabis. So it's really up to you. In terms of legendaries, I don't think either Triforce or Strybreaker is like recommended here. Obviously, obviously Strybreaker is recommended against Gangplank, but the thing is, Strybreaker really cripples your damage for the whole game. Like Triforce gives Darius so much damage the second it's purchased that it's miles ahead of anything else practically okay so you really don't want to be giving up on triforce and just going for a striper item that only works if you get in his range to begin with right which is the main problem if you got in his range with triforce just <laughs> just kill him in two seconds right so yeah i wouldn't go for striper basically under any circumstance unless you're just getting you know destroyed you have no choice you have no team whatever right maybe then it's good to get but don't go for it up next, we have Gnar. I'd say Gnar is... Uh, let me think, let me think, let me think. He's kind of a skill matchup. Not because the lane is particularly hard. I think it's one of the easiest range top players. But more so because it's like... No matter how the laning phase goes, no matter how hard you win, Gnar eventually gets to a point where you can no longer kill him in the side lane, Okay. He has way too much move speed, he has way too much range, he can cut you very easily. And when he when he basically gets Triforce or like two items, you can just kiss killing him goodbye on the side lane, okay? Not to mention, even if you do like catch him or whatever, he can very easily just get into his big form, ult you away, and then just jump out. I mean he throws a rock behind him, and that slow means that even if you aren't ghosted, you aren't catching up to him, right? So it's like incredibly difficult. To kill Nar after laning phase. Now in laning phase, Nar is relatively easy because his range is again not that high in lane, which means that you can get away with landing Qs and stuff. Or in the best case scenario, if you get into like a W range with Nar, he's essentially just dead. Okay, because you can cancel his jump. His jump is kind of one of the slower ones, and the way you want to trick him is this. Okay, so Nar ideally wants to jump on a unit and then jump behind them to get a double jump, right? What you want to do is give him the double jump on yourself. Let's say that you W him and you ghost into him, right? What you want to do is straight up run past him and make it really tasty for him. Just stay right between him and his turret. The, he will be so tempted to just jump right on you that the second he does, he fell into your trap. Because when he starts his jump animation, if you just E... 180 degrees away from where the Nar started his jump, you will land him, I mean, you will land your hook every time. You will land a hook every time, and now he's fully stuck in your melee range and just waiting to die, okay? Generally speaking, Nar is kind of only killable in his mini form. When he's in his big form, it's not that he's, like, tough to kill, it's that his ult is on such a low cooldown that he has every time, and it's just too reliable of a disengage, right? He can just, like, ult, stun you, and then jump away, and that's it. At the end of that situation, you've lost health. He's gained health because his big form heals him, actually. Or it doesn't heal him, but he keeps more of the health, but whatever, right? So it's like, his big form is generally to be avoided, okay? Don't get near him in his big form, because all you're doing is just taking free damage that you don't have to take, right? I don't mind going for Qs here and there, but he just goes for the stun, throws a rock, it's AoE, so it's gonna land on you, and then it ults you away and then jumps out. So it's like, it's such a waste of time to try to do anything against his um big form, but his little form, he's so fragile and squishy and killable that it's just, mwah, like a delicious kill when you get to him, right? It's very much a matchup of, like, you kill him every time you have Ghost, but I'd say generally speaking, Right, if you can get like three, four kills out of this lane, you got lucky because, like, like not you got lucky. That's your best case scenario because, again, the second he hits that sort of side lane power spike, 
there's not much you can do to kill him. He's just too annoying in the 1v1. But if you're that fed, just kill his teammates. Wait, what are you doing? Should I kill him? Tapis is a good purchase against Nar too. If you're struggling, go for that. Not Merc Treads. And yeah. Graves. Graves is... I played against him once this season, and I completely just stole his lunch money. <laughs> like, Graves cannot top lane at all, dog. Like, his auto attack range is just your hook range. So if you time it correctly, you can basically hook him out of his auto attack every single time and then just run him down. And even if you don't hook him, he can't really put a lot of distance between himself and you. So even if he's taking fleet for work and he E's away, W's you and ults away, you can just ghost and catch up to him. And the second you do, he is as good as dead. Basically, just don't get hit by free Qs. That's all I can say. There's not really much to think about in this matchup. Just uh, don't hit. It's <laughs> advice to go for every single matchup, okay? All right, though. The next matchup is Heimerdinger. Heimer is an abomination. This creature, like, comes from the depths of hell and only is played by... Okay, I don't want to insult people, but just... It's played by... <sighs> right. Control yourself. Anyway... <laughs> Why don't you guys come up with an insult in the comments? Heimer is unplayable. Okay? There is nothing you can do. Even if he misses his abilities, even if he misses his Q, even if he misses his E, not his Q, his W, I mean, the rockets, right? I mean, he can't miss it, right? Because he can aim it so that it's like a wide cone so that one of the rockets hits you anyway, right? But it doesn't matter if he misses anything, because you can't kill him. He gets Moose near his turret, so he can very easily just walk up, cast an ability, and just walk back, and now he's out of your range, because he's getting like 60, 50 Moose Speed when he's near his turret. It's insane, okay? He's very squishy, but every time you go for a kill, unless you have a jungler with coward control, it's just going to be ending up in him killing you and getting away, or you killing him and then dying to his turret. This matchup is straight up not playable. You could kill him three times, go for a, a, a magic resist, specter scowl, force of nature, anything that has changed and put it on him, and he will still kill you. Okay? Like, his ultimate turret is insane. Darius does not like zoner champions, and Heimer is the most disgusting zoner champion ever, because he has free move speed, and there's zero consequence for him missing his abilities, okay? So, I guess the best you can do is just try to avoid his abilities, right? But that's, that's not going to be enough to win you the lane. So, good luck. You can find solace in the fact that this is not a matchup that a lot of people play. Because the vast majority of humans have enough self-pride and worth to not play this disgusting creature. Anyway, um, Ilawi Top. This is a very annoying matchup in that it's literally just about her E. Nothing else matters, okay? It doesn't matter who's ahead. You could be one item ahead or one item down. Just, it doesn't matter who's ahead. If Ilari lands her E, she kills you. If you dodge her E, you kill her. It's very much black and white. It's straight up black and white. And it's crazy. I've had Ilawis who are two items down kill me when they la when she lands her E. And I've had situations where I've killed an Ilawi who's two items up on me when I dodge her E. It's such a binary, boring, stupid lane, and nothing else matters. Okay? Straight up, nothing else matters. She lands her E. Good. Just walk out of it. Don't let her hit you too much with it. Dodge your tentacles. She misses her E. Press Ghost, and they just run her down, and she can't do anything against you, okay? That is it. There are no runes, there are no items, there are no tactics, just, that's it. And the thing is, pre-6, Ilawi can't fight you. So if you can go for a pre-6 fight, go for it. And your Ghost will make you even better at dodging your tentacles, but those kills are only good at making you stronger against her teammates, right? So if you get 1-2 kills on the Ilawi before level 6, good. You can now kill Ilawi's teammates way faster. But Ilawi herself is going to die 
the same. It's going to take the same amount of time to kill the Lenali. So my personal recommendation is try your best to just shove lanes into the Lenali to keep her busy and just kill her team. Because you're ba you're kind of a lot better at team fights than Ilawi due to the fact that Ilawi kind of just sets up a zone and then fights enemies inside of it. Whereas you, the buff of Noxia Might goes with you. Okay, you carry the buff. So as long as you have your summer spells, you can keep up with some of these backliners and stuff. She can't under basically no circumstance. So although you're not that good against ranged champions, you're a lot better than Ilawi. But that's just like like you know, <laughs> it's not much of an accomplishment. It was just like one of the worst champions against range, but shut up, right? Like, you want to just be more useful in team fights than her, okay? Irelia. Irelia, I'd say, is. It's. It used to be Darius' favorite, but now I'd say it's more of a skill matchup because, essentially speaking, it's also kind of binary like Illawi. If she lands her E. She kills you. If you land, if you dodge her E, you kill her. But there are some things you can do to hedge your bets. Okay. First off, Aurelia's strength is in minions. Okay. If there are minions around you, then Aurelia becomes stronger. It's very counterintuitive because you, normally we used to be like, okay, I have a big minion wave. Then, you know, I have the advantage. No, it's the opposite. If Aurelia is like, no, if you have a big minion wave, that's more heals for the Aurelia, more mobility, more of a wasting your time and getting your abilities back to get into you, okay? So, the easiest point to just fight the Aurelia is when you catch her with no minions around. If you are the only character she can dash onto, then even if she lands her E, you can use your ghost to kite her auto attacks, land your 5 stacks, and then go for a quick QW ult execute, okay? But if she has minions to dash onto, then it's deadly to be hit by her E. Now the difficult part comes in that if the Irelia has Borg and she's like smart basically, what she'll do is she'll attack you first and then try to stun you with her E. And that makes it a lot easier for her to do so, okay? Or basically it'll just guarantee it because you can't actually dodge when you're slow like that. So, if she's smart, she'll do that, and that basically just secures your doom. But if you're smart, you're not going to fight her when she's around her minions. And de definitely, you're not going to just run into her when she's just pushing a wave. Because when she's slow pushing wave, she already has her passive stacked up to full. So, if you go in and fight her when she's got her passive stacked fully, you are going to get just chopped up. Right? You're going to get, like, wood chipper, dog. So, do not do that. Okay? Respect her slow push. And... I'd say the Aurelia lane is basically just League of Slow Push because it essentially always just boils down to, okay, you slow push a wave into her and then you let, a wave, let her slow push a wave into you. It's just like this back and forth, like it's so like boring kind of. She's very freezable, okay? If you can freeze the lane just outside your turret, she is doomed. Because Aurelia's Q, not only does it dash herself, but dashes her, like, behind her target. So she's dashing around just outside her turret. She's basically just a few like, clicks away from being hooked under your turret itself and getting just turret shot once or twice, which is enough for you to just go kill her and run her down, right? It's going to be a bit difficult to, to freeze her if she's intelligent because if she is slow pushing with her Qs, she will try to slow push at the right time to crash it all in. But if she does make the mistake of miss slow pushing it in that... Okay, so when you slow push a wave, you don't actually slow push every single one. You slow push a few, and then you just shove the last one, so the wave crashes into the turret. If she doesn't shove, and get a messy crash outside of your turret, but it's like in your turret range, but your minions are there, then you want to freeze that, and that can just mess her up completely, okay? All in all, kind of a binary matchup, but with a lot of... um. Clever movement with your ghost, you can definitely make a difference in it. Jax, I do not like fighting this matchup. I really hate fighting this matchup. Jax just straight up counters Darius, okay? He can Q to jump into your Q. His counter strike, it's lower mana than your hook, and it comes up faster. So he can kind of just use it to just waste your hook and then just like, you know, eventually run you out of mana to be able to fight him. And... 
even if you just are attack farming the lane, he can very easily just go for Ws to poke you down, right? And the thing is, by default, there is no opening to use against Jax, okay? By default, you can't do anything to kind of just start the fight well. Because let's say that you try to open with Q, he's going to Q jump on you. Let's say you open with Hook, RWQ, he's going to Q jump on you. Let's say you Hook and you do EQ. Good job. But you've wasted 110 mana just to land on 1Q. And now you've left yourself wide open from to QE and jump on you. You could try opening with W, and that is the ideal method. But the thing is, a good Jax is going to see the W coming, and they're going to react to it, okay? A good Jax won't just eat the W. They're going to press E the second you the, the Darius starts spinning in his W animation, and then block it. And that is, I think, the key to this lane, your W. If Jax blocks your W, he now gets the ability to just stick to your face fully for the entire fight. That W is slow, but you keep him between your auto range and your Q range because you really gotta kite this guy to be able to kill him, okay? It's a very kite-heavy matchup. And because if you start with W, you're essentially relying on the Jack's stupidity to be able to get a good start to the fight, it's essentially not yours to win, but the Jax's to lose. You can't force this matchup. There's only one thing you can do to secure your lane and also fight. And that is freeze the lane just outside your turret. If you do this, Jax can no longer Q jump on you. So you can go for Qs on him, right? And if he gets a bit too crazy, you can always just retreat on your turret and hook him under it for some turret shots. And also, when you're freezing the lane just outside your turret, Jax is going to be hitting your minion, so try to shove the, shove the minion wave in and crash into your turret. Because he's busy hitting the minions and not hitting you, it kind of gives you more of an opportunity to try to kind of get a few stacks on him. And if you can sneak like three stacks on him and he's jumped away, then you can very easily just ghost run him down and kill him eventually, okay? If the Jax counter-strikes on you, then that's basically it, right? And this is what I mean, like, he can strikes on you, but he doesn't, like, he, I, mean, I mean, sorry. He Q jumps on you, but you haven't used anything. This is one of the openings that you can use, because Jax really has two abilities that can stop you from killing him. Counter-Strike, he can stop you from stacking on him with your attacks, and Q, he can use to get away or jump into your Q. If he uses either of these abilities, you want to use your hook. So let's say he jumps on you, you use your hook, you land your Q. Let's say you use a counter strike. Just as it's about to stun, you use your hook and you land your Q. Okay? Doing this in this order is very important because unlike before, where we open with hook Q, we are now using hook Q to slow him with our hook, right? Because hook slows after it's done hooking. And setting him up perfectly for a nice auto W and then just run him down. Okay? Now, if he's just Q'd on you and he hasn't used Counter Strike. It can get a little tricky. My recommendation is just press Ghost and then just try to land your Q, right? And then when he counter strikes, then use your hook on him. But if he just lands on you, just hook him and run back while queuing. Because if you don't have a Ghost, you really don't want to be fighting Jax. Okay, you got to use that Ghost to kite his auto attacks. And Ghost is a... It's not as much of a game changer as you want, but it lets you outplay his Q kind of and his counter strike without sacrificing your hook, okay? You can use your hook to basically deal with his Counter-Strike and not his Q and him jumping on top of you. Overall, this is not a good matchup because if the Jax does int his abilities, then yeah, sure, you can kill him. But if the Jax knows what he's doing, it's straight up a counter pick, right? Because he has every tool in his toolkit. to he can, he can block your W. He can dodge your Q automatically. And because he jumps directly on top of you, a good Jax can actually dodge your E too by just moving around your champion. And if he moves in an awkward way, like he stuns and he moves behind you, now you're kind of in a weird spot because unless you have Ghost, you're just dead. When you hook a champion that's behind you, they're going to be hooked into you and then bounce back towards that turret. That means they're still going to be in range to hit you while you're running to your turret. So, yeah. Not a fun champ to fight. Um... It doesn't matter how far ahead you are, he will kill you in the side lane. His side lane damage, like later on into the game, is absurd. So unless you're super fed, don't be looking for fights against him. I'd rather just 
wait for him to leave, shove lane, and then just try to be more useful than him in team fights. And you are more useful than him in team fights. Jackson team fights is a bit of a. It's not terrible, but he's only good in like more chaotic team fights where everyone's just kind of clueless. No one knows what's what's going on. Like he can just sweep people up. But if it's an organized team fight with CC abilities at the ready, Jax can get very easily locked down and shut down. So. Yeah, if you can use your hook properly, get some dunks going, you can very easily outperform him in team fights. All right, Jace. I'd say Jace is. It depends on how good the Jace player is. Sorry, if I bumped my mic, but it depends on how good the Jace player is. But I've found out recently that they don't have to be as good anymore to be tough to kill. Jace does so much damage in his melee form. That when he knocks you back, let's say that you hook RWQ him, and then he just does hammer form, like dives in on you, and then knocks you back. He will half health you, and you will do 200 damage, okay? That does so much damage for him. So, against Jace, you really want to only take the fights where you're ready to kill him straight afterwards with your ghost, okay? Now, if the Jace is smart, he will take phase rush. And Phase Rush basically stops you from being able to do much against him because if you hook him and if you stop to go for an R attack or W or Q, he's going to activate his Phase Rush, knock you back, and the Phase Rush move speed will be enough to get him away from the situation and out of your grasp, which we don't want. The biggest key thing, I mean, obviously things like building your toppies against him, you know, it's like common sense, but the biggest thing that I can give in terms of a tip is don't give him easy ease let's say that you know jace is he wants to run towards his turret right his turret is his um escape if you are away from his escape he can knock you back and just escape because you won't be in the way anymore okay what you should do is hook him and instead of just bothering with attacks run directly behind him because by knocking you away He's not knocking you away. He's knocking you towards where he wants to go. So yes, you, you lose half your health, but you're still an obstacle in front of him that he has to deal with, okay? And if you have your ghost, he can't. You'll just straight kill him, okay? The best thing you can do against his knockback is stay between him and a wall. Because if he knocks you into a wall, it doesn't actually knock you the full duration. It just knocks you until you get to the wall and just stops. And because you're not knocked further, the displacement ends there. So you're cutting short the kind of stun that he has on you because of the knockback. You're cutting short the distance between him and you. You can just basically ghost up to him and run him down and chase him down, okay? So the best thing, stay between him and a wall. And if you can't do that, just stay between him and his exit, okay? Don't underestimate phase rush move speed. If you go for a hook and I'll just go WQ and then I'll walk in front of him. No, he will activate phase rush and just run. So really make it a priority to stay in front of him. Okay. The second you slip up and he gets that good hammer back, you've lost the situation. And because of how much health you've lost, you can no longer claw your back your way back into the lane because the next time the situation happens again, he just straight will kill you. Okay, he has the damage too. So yeah. Overall, really tough matchup, and your opening is really tiny, and the opening is going to end up in you almost getting killed every single time, and if the Jace plays it well, he's not even going to give it to you, right? A good Jace, like, they're going to stay in their melee range and just pester you as much as possible, and once they get Eclipse, they're basically never going to go hammer range. They're just going to max range, just poke you down, and just get away from you, okay? So... And also, once Jace gets Eclipse, it's practically impossible to kill him. Eclipse, I think, is kind of just overpowered right now. Like, it's 70 AD. 70, which is, like, I think the highest in the game out of any item, aside from maybe, like, an ADC item. And the shield it gives, it's on a 6-second cooldown, so he gets it twice in a fight. And it's, like, a 300, 400 shield each time. It's just too over... It's too much for you to deal with, right? So once Jace gets Eclipse, and you haven't killed him yet... You're not going to, right? Now, in super late game, you can kind of one-shot him, but Jace doesn't... He doesn't scale badly, dog. He scales crazy good, too, once he gets that Manimune stack, too. So, 
it's really just an annoying matchup. You have to be creative to just outdo him in team fights because he will be a constant source of backline damage. A Jace King of 1-4, and he will still have healthier ADC with one Lightning Shock. So it's going to be really tough on your part to outdo Jace in team fights. So <laughs> good luck. Insanely difficult. Uh, top laner, Kale. I'll put Kale as skill because Kale's early game is very abusable. She's melee, you can just run her down like a dog. But okay, careful. Level one, Kale has <laughs> crazy, but one of the strongest level ones in the game. If she has like lethal tempo, okay? So if she has lethal tempo and ignite, maybe chill a bit level one, right? Maybe don't just go melee range because she will just kill you. And I've talked to like a Riven one trick and he, he and Riven's like, a, okay, her level one is tough, right? And he told me he, he did the whole Riven trick where you stack up your passive with your Qs and then you go Q all the Qs, Qs. <laughs> she still died to the Kale. So yeah, I hicked it a bit. I don't know why, but still. Kale level one, very destructive. But aside from level one, she's just a free kill. Just try to farm up against her as much as possible. But the problem with Kale is that even if you kill her a ton, she will farm up and she will be a problem and a potential win condition for the enemy team. Kale is like, she's a kind of champion who can 1v9 a game on her own. And Kane, Kale specifically counters Darius because she gets so much move speed with her passive, okay? When Kale has her passive activated, you can't kill her. Her move speed allows her to basically attack you, move away, attack you, and just cut you into oblivion. And if you miss your hook, say bye-bye to like the vast majority of your health. It is not a pretty picture to just see a Kale, like her stupid auto attack animation where she just like flaps her wings, like, hey, Angela, and she just like melts away 60% of your health. Like, that's not good to see, right? It's so annoying, but you can't do much against it, right? If you're picking fights against Kale in the side lane, Pay close attention to her passive. Again, if she has her passive, she will melt you. If you can start a fight where she doesn't have her passive, where she's trying to stack it up from like the lowest amount up to the highest amount against you, then you can feasibly kill her. But at some point, you won't be able to anymore, okay? They keep reducing the amount of time she has to cast her ultimate and let her attack while she's invulnerable because Riot loves to do this thing where they just remove counterplay from champions. So... There will come a point in the game where she just straight up kills you during the ult invulnerability, and there's nothing you can do about it. And the worst part, she can use her ult invulnerability to stop you from getting your reset, okay? So Kale, in terms of laning phase, is an easy-ish matchup, right? And even in a side lane, if you have Ghost, you can just pretty easily kill her. But if you're in an elo where players struggle to close out games, then it can get rough, okay? And if, you, like, if you're playing as Kale, you're basically on the clock, okay? Win the game by 30, 35 minutes, or you just insta-lose, okay? She's one of those champions. I hate those, but they're in the game. So try your best to abuse her early. Freezes are your friend until she gets her big form that you can't freeze because she has range, right? And try your best to push your weight around early on, especially with the kills that you got from the Kale. If you can get like a sick triple kill in a dragon and get, sacrifice a bunch of minions to Kale, it's worth to, it's worth it to get that triple kill. Because while you are accelerating Kale's scaling, you're also moving your team faster towards the end and getting an objective. Okay, you really gotta just wrestle your team and get to the end before she can start scaling up. Because her invulnerability does make her kind of assassin proof, so you can't just be like, oh, I have like an echo or something. She's she's a goner for sure. She's ult herself. And nothing, like, he can't do anything, and he gets killed by her. So, yeah. Like in champs, huh? Kennen. I'd say Kennen is a very difficult matchup if the Kennen knows what he's doing. And right now, the top meta kind of helps range top players because of how overpowered Fleet Work is. So, well, I don't think Kennen's take Fleet Work anyway, but it's still like a range top player matchup. So, Kennen is he's not a champion that does a lot of damage, right? You can kind of brush off most of his damage, but he's very tough to catch, okay? First off, he does not have to operate within your hook range at all. If he's smart, he will completely stay out of your hook range. And if you can't hook him, you can't do anything against him, okay? So that's, like, if he's playing well enough to the point where you can't hook him, that's it. 
right? Say adios to your lane. You're not going to do anything. But if he does play brazenly or, or aggressively enough to the point where you can land your hooks, that's where the gameplay starts. So first off, um, you want to hide behind your minions, don't get hit by shurikens. And you want to basically manage how much electricity stacks he has on you. If his auto attack is glowing, for example, you guys start walking backwards, get in some bush so he can't auto attack you. You guys stay behind your minions to not, to not get hit by Q. And if he has one stack of electricity on you, you're going to walk back so he can't proc it again and get that free damage off on you. Now, when you have him hooked, he will get two stacks or so on you pretty quickly. And what you want to do is W him as soon as you're about to get stunned. Because a cannon player will, will instinctively, the second he stuns you, he will lightning rush and he will run away. Okay? When you, Q, when you W to slow him down, you're essentially going to stop him in his tracks. You're going to waste his lightning rush. And when you come back up from the stun, he'll be kind of at most in your Q range. Which lets you just ghost run him down and kill him, okay? And Cannon in all ends is really not that good. You can kind of kill him from half health if he's full health. Just, just straight up body him if you land the hook. So really manage your slows carefully, okay? I don't have much to say about this match. Tenacity is really good. Um, like Merc is really good. But at the end of the day, all that matters is whether you land hooks or not. If you land them... You can play the game, you can get kills. If you can't land them, you can't do either of those two things. So yeah, that's the Kennen matchup. All right, we're back with the rest of the video. I had to take a break because this was taking too long. Kled. Kled top is a very hard skill matchup that I'd say is a little bit Kled favored. Because essentially speaking, if you as Darius fail your abilities, Kled can just straight kill you. But if Kled fails his abilities, he can still kind of just get away. Because for Kled to get his kind of win condition, right, he has to essentially land his Q on you, and then just stay on you with his E and not let you land your Q. But if he doesn't land his Q or whatever, or if you walk in range to engage on him, he can very easily just E dash away and disengage, especially level 6, because his level 6 is unstoppable. So that's like a free way for him to get away from you if he messes up. And... Darius doesn't really have this choice. Like, if he messed up, he's just dead. So, I'd say in terms of the consequences for mistakes, Kled has it a bit easier than Darius in this matchup. But it's generally a skill matchup. So, the number one thing is whoever lands their Q better. If Kled is more able to consistently land his Qs, he's going to straight up just win this lane. Because Kled Q isn't just poke, but it's like, it's poke, it's CC, it... It's a lot of things, right? And if you can consistently land it, it can work wonderfully well with the rest of his abilities. And Kled is one of the more static champions in the game. He's got so much stats. So if he's able to dodge your Qs consistently, then you're in a bit of a trouble as Darius, right? Because like he just has so much health that unless you're winning trades, you can't just straight kill him from full health. Like He, he just has way too much stats. Unless he's not taking Ignite. If he's not taking Ignite, you can kind of just kill him like normally, like normal Darius stuff. But if he has Ignite, you got to win trades first and then go for all this stuff, okay? Um, you have to try to dodge his Q and also kite his W. Because his W auto attacks are... They're on a timer, right? So if he starts the first auto attack... He now has a timer to do the rest of them, and if he doesn't do them, they're just gone. So if you can you, you can press Ghost and then just kite him while he's doing the W R attacks, then he can't do them. And even if he E's through you, right, let's say he started his E animation, a kind of tricky thing you can do, right, is, well, first off, you want to dodge the E to not give him the second E recast, but say he goes through you and he lands it. When he presses E, you kind of know where he's going to land. So what you can do with Ghost is just walk away from that position so you can only get one auto attack off. If you do this properly, he should be able to E R attack and then E R attack and that's it. You can just kite the rest of them, okay? So it's definitely a matchup where Ghost can make a huge difference. Um, I'd say you don't really want to be starting fights with Qs against Smart Cleds. Now this is for like... Post level 3, basically, when you guys have both all your abilities, except for ultimates, but then 
things don't change much with the ultimates. It's just a bit in your favor if you're winning the fight or if you're losing, it's in his favor. But whatever, right? Let's just talk about the fight. So early game, level one, level two, go for cues, go for trades, just go for good trades. And level three is where you want to fight, okay? So you essentially don't want to open with Q unless you know he can't E into your Q. Because if you open with Q, he straight up will just Q land, E on top of you, and kill you from full health with Ignite. So you don't want to give them, give them this opportunity. You only go for, want to go for Q if you notice that some ability of his is missing. Kled has to use W to farm, okay? But smart Kleds, they'll kind of just not rank it until it's time to actually kill you. So there's that trick they can do, which might be able to delay the actual fight in the lane. So just watch out for that and don't get baited by him not having W earlier on. But um, a good Kled will just straight kill you if you open with Q. My recommendation is to try to open with W. And when he starts to W all attack on you, then you ghost and you kite back. Okay? And here the game starts. Okay? You kite back. If you get hit by his Q, it's a bit of a close fight. If you dodge his Q, then you can just run into him and land your Q or whatever. Just mess him up, okay? The, I wish there was more I could say about this matchup, but it's purely just whoever, like, moves better, lands their abilities better. One thing's really good, though. You want to get anti-auto attack stuff early on. So Ninja Toppies is perfect. And if that's not enough, you can even get, like, a Warden's Mail on top of that, and his damage will just die, Okay? Obviously, if you're like three, four kills behind, <laughs> this isn't going to do anything. But if you're like, if you died once and you have like 800 or 1.1k gold in your inventory, get that Ninja Tabis because he's one of those champions where because his damage is so heavy on his auto attacks, <laughs> he kind of gets messed up by that item specifically. So, yeah, Kled Top, I'd say it's slightly him favored, but it's not so much to the point where like we're losing our minds over anything, right? It's it's pretty chill. I mean, it's pretty chill in terms of skill. Lucian. Um, it's a range top. I think Lucian top is not that challenging. Right? I'd see this is a Darius player. This is a, not a champion that most we play. Just in case he comes back to the meta again. But Lucian can essentially just hit you with that really long range. I don't know if it's his Q, but the one that goes through the minions. And you can very easily just avoid that by making sure there isn't like a singular minion directly between you and him. So you can't just... Point that towards you and poke you down. The thing with Lucian is, although he has a dash with his E, he doesn't have a way of putting distance between you and him when you're already on top of him, right? This is what all the great, not the great, but the annoying range top players have. Jace, Quinn, Vayne, they have a way to put gaps between you and them when you are on them. He doesn't. So when you hook him, he's just dead, okay? And his range isn't that high, and if you're having trouble hook him, Hook at him just, when you're full health, just ghost up to him, auto W, and then you can go for hook into Q, whatever, just, you don't have to engage with go, with your hook if you have ghost, right? Yeah, there's nothing really much for me to say here, it's just a free range matchup. Lulu, I'm gonna have this matchup here as like a representation for supports top, because they do get played quite a bit. Like, like, I think the other video, I just had, like, a support Ivern top will just roam all around the entire map. I mean, I didn't I've only had anything in, but still. So, when people play support top, it's two kinds, okay? So, number one, they play it in a way where um, they're essentially not top laning. They're just perma roaming. And number two, where they actually stay in lane and annoy you. Now, when they're perma roaming, you want to just, first off... Perma shove the lane, perma shove the lane, perma shove to the turret, and get your ultimate as soon as possible. Okay, getting an uncontested, uncontested ultimate as Darius is really huge. And when you get it this fast, it means that you can roll up to a fight in the river or at the dragon earlier on, and you have your ultimate and nobody else does, right? Unless someone's super fed, and that gives you the ability to essentially carry that fight one hundred percent. So. If they're going for some sort of Roman Janna kind of thing, you gotta just farm up, get your levels, get some stats, and then just start moving to fights and carrying them when you have your summoner spells, okay? You will be able to. It's like playing when you're super fed. Now, one thing you have to do is you have to ping your teammates, okay? Because when I played the Ivern game that I talked about, right? 
my teammates were actually pretty decent at avoiding dying to the Ivern. They knew where he was, they kept track of him, and although they had some unnecessary movements here and there, they for the most part didn't just die for no reason, right? They did die, but it's not like the low wheeler kind of death where they go in and die 20 times, okay? What you want to do is keep track of your enemy top laner. You're not laning against, against anyone anymore, right? You're just farming. So keep track of your enemy top laner, and whenever they're near some lane, ping them. Okay, just ping on the map where they are. Don't ping once. Nobody listens to one ping. Just ping like three, four times. Ping, 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 ping. Just annoy them. Because if you annoy them, they'll know that they're there, right? They'd rather You'd rather have alive teammates that are annoyed than dead teammates that are also annoyed because they're going to blame you for not being able to stop this thing you have no control over. So that part's pretty easy. If someone plays support top, though, in that they stay in top, now the game gets trickier because supports have a lot of annoying abilities that can kind of just cancel you out. And they're very low economy in that a support champion doesn't need to farm or get kills to be effective, whereas you do. So what a support champion can do is play in a way where they're kind of just invalidating you, right? They're making it so that you can't snowball, you can barely farm, and the kill opportunities are very much non-existent, especially if they're playing like a Janna top, right? Janna top is the worst of them, especially because Janna is like... It's one of those champions where... The only people playing Janna are the people who know what they're doing on her, who know how to abuse her move speed to be aggressive against champions like Darius. So, it, some of the matchups are nightmarish. The easier ones are like, the ones where you can just kind of hook them and they can't just CC on themselves. Like, Sona's pretty easy. Ivern is kind of easy if you can get the hook on him. Soraka is kind of easy. Karma is doable, right? With Karma, you gotta just hook her, because her tether range is the same as your hook. And the second she gets the tether off, you want to just W her. Kind of like the cannon matchup, where the second you're stunned, you want to use her W. The second she roots you, you want to use her W so she can't just shield and run away. I think it just goes around to her and kill her, right? It's pretty rudimentary. It's just all about landing a hook, and her tether range conveniently puts you in range to land that hook. So, yeah. For support, you mostly want to see if you can cheese kills against the ones that can be cheese kills against. Cheese killed against. <laughs> cheese kills against. And you also want to try your best to keep up with the roams, okay? The thing is, Darius just naturally has way more power than a support, especially earlier on, okay? He just has a lot of meat. It's tough to kill a Darius. So if there's like a situation happening in the jungle, let's say your, your jungler is getting invaded, like, like drop the farm and fight there, okay? And I, I don't mean like, oh, your jungler feels like they're in danger, so you just drop three camps. I mean, okay, there's a clear enemy threat there. There's someone that you can reach if you leave lane right now. Go do it, okay? You might be low in levels, but remember, you don't have a person who cares about farming or whatever against you. You care about a, you have a person who's basically just there to annoy you and help their teammates. So if you can help your teammates and get kills in the process, or even feed some of your teammates instead, you're doing a good job because you're going to scale up to be a lot more useful than that support. The exception is if they have an ADC comp, in that they have like three, four supportive champions and one ADC to defend. That kind of comp's a bit fun. <clears throat> Not supposed to swear on YouTube. In any case, um, if it's an ADC composition, you can't do too much about it as Darius, aside from just trying to split push, right? That's the one thing you can do, split push trying to make space, but... That's a bit outside the scope of this video. So, that supports. Let's go into she's on the top laner, Malphite. I'd say Malphite is a Darius favorite matchup. Now, mind you, it's not a super easy matchup because once he gets his level 6, you're not going to kill him, right? His ultimate is too reliable of an escape to the point where he's just going to use it every time you have a good kill position on him. So he's trading it for your summoner spells if you use them to get a good fight going. So it's not even worth to fight him a lot of the time, right? He's like a tank champion. Tanks, they, get, they get too tough to kill, so you gotta kill their teammates. Now the thing is, Malphite will play in a way where he wants to poke you down with his Qs, okay? The good part about this is twofold. So number one, Malphite's Q is really mana hungry. 
So if he just sits in lane and spams his Qs, he will run out of mana, and that will let you kill him. And number two, Malphite Q just barely puts you into hook range. Just barely, okay? And the way you do it is you have to walk directly towards the Malphite, okay? Not at a minion, not at, like, around minions, directly at him. And if you do this, there will be a brief moment where he's in the middle of his Q animation where you can actually get him with your hook. Because remember, while Malphite is queuing, he is stationary. When the Q is traveling to you, you're still faster than him. So if you can just press tap at that perfect moment where he's tossed the Q but he hasn't landed it, then you will hook him every single time. If you watch my Malphite matchups, right, that I post on the channel and for Darius, I just hook him every time. And this is how I do it. Okay? You walk exactly towards them. And if they try to queue like a minion, this is even more perfect. Because when they try to queue minions, they will put themselves in your hook range. So you got to master this technique. Once you can do it, once you can pull it off, then you got to know how to follow through on the all-in. Because if you just do like an auto WQ, remember, Malphite still has his move speed. Okay? And one more thing. If he's smart and he just slams the ground down, he's going to slow your auto attacks to the point where it's not going to be easy to keep up with him with auto attacks. So my personal recommendation, right, is to not layer your slows on top of each other and to chain them. Hook on Darius does the hook thing, which is the stun, and after the hook, there's like a short but very significant slow. So you do is you hook into a Q, or you can do an auto attack Q, and then you get back in range to do a W the second that E slow is over. This way, you'll be able to keep him in your range longer, run the Q move speed timer out, and then just eventually be able to grind him down and kill him. This works perfectly pre-level 6, and it also works post-level 6, but he's just going to ult out towards the end when you're about to kill him, so yeah. Also be careful, because he's really good at setting up ganks for his jungler. Although, Malphite players are kind of readable in that you kind of know when they're going to, like, ult. So what you can do is actually just flash Q and avoid the ult and also hit him with the Q. And this is a funny thing. If you hook on yourself and Malphite conveniently happens to land on that hook area, you'll be able to hook him instantly as soon as he finishes his ult animation. So you're kind of stunning him while he's stunning you. It's not a very useful technique, but it's just there in case you want to do something with it. Maokai. Maokai is not a tough matchup. He can get annoying because he is a tank and he gets too meaty to kill at some point. Like, if Maokai gets a kill or if, he gets, if he's allowed to just buy his items, he eventually gets to a point where it's kind of pointless fighting him. Because unless you're going to kill him in that one go, which unless he's pushed up, you're just straight up not, he is just going to auto attack his minions and get his health back, okay? His sustain is insane, and it does eventually get to a point where it's purposeless to fight him. But, until that point, he's relatively easy to put down and kill, right? Because, generally speaking, right... Even if he plays it properly and dodges everything, he doesn't really have a consistent way of disengaging with you, as long as you don't waste your hook on engaging with him, right? Let's say that he's just laning and you're laning. You gotta walk in and start the fight with your Q, or better yet, your W, right? Let's say we get into attack range, auto W, and we go for a Q. Now, in this situation, Maokai can't really do anything against you. If he Qs you, he better do it during that first auto attack. And if he's smart enough to do that, instead of auto WQ, just go for WQ, right? If he um, Ws onto your Q, like that root thing, and he just um, roots you, then he's going to dodge your Q, but he's now in your face. So you can just auto attack him, kill him, and when he's just about to get away, you can always use your hook to re-engage on him. So pre-6... This guy isn't that much of a threat. I'd say he's easier to kill than the Maokai. And also his ultimate is weaker than Maokai's. Uh, Mal Maokai's ultimate is weaker than Malphite's for these kinds of quick twitchy fights. Because it's much, much slower. It's much slower 
and it just does less on the points that it hits. It's supposed to be more like a mass engage tool, not really for 1v1s. So from that perspective, Maokai is very much a manageable champion, right? His tankiness means that he has to attack the wave, which you can kind of limit sometimes. But eventually, he does get to a point where you can kill him. All in all, pretty easy matchup. I don't think I need to explain much. You're just going to get fed and destroy him. Don't think I got to explain anything here. He's on top laner. Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser is kind of in this gray zone, but I'd say I put him into Darius' favorite because if a Mordekaiser plays is smart, he will give up everything until level 6 and then just hook, ult, ignite, kill you. But if a champion has to give up the entire lane, that means that they're not in the advantageous position. So, as Darius, you kind of pretty, pretty easy to just kill him pre-6, right? All you gotta do is make sure he doesn't get the... Like, you gotta stay in your minions so that he can't get those solo crit cues off. If you give him those, he just straight kills you. But if you stand in your minions, he can't get those off, so his damage is limited, so you can just run him down. And I'd say you can kill him basically every time you have ghosts. So pre-6 or a Mordekaiser without ultimate is not a challenge. You just straight meet back kill him. What is a challenge is when he has his ultimate. When Mord has ultimate, the game just changes. Because if he has ult and you don't have ghost, you're dead. Okay? So save your summoner spells for when he has his ultimate. Okay? I'm not kidding when I say that unless you have 3-4 kills on him, and you're consistently able to dodge his Qs and outplay him, he will straight up just stat check, kill you in his ultimate, and there's nothing you can do about it, even if you are a few kills ahead, okay? So, the clear idea is to avoid him in his ultimate, and then fight him outside of his ultimate. Now, the biggest thing here to avoiding him in his ultimate is to avoiding his hook, okay? His hook is a mess if you get hit by it. You're basically practically dead, because... If the Mordekaiser is smart, what he'll do is he'll land his hook on top of you, and then he'll press R on you. And this mechanic makes it so that the hook lands 100% of the time, because you can't dodge it, right? His, hook, his ultimate slows you, and then the hook just hooks you in, and the hook goes with him into the, the death realm, or whatever it's called. So, if the Mordekaiser knows what he's doing, he can use that technique to, to get a guaranteed ult off on you, to get, to get a guaranteed hook off on you, and an ult off on you every single time. All right, so really respect him if you don't have ghost. Okay, really respect him if you're in his mid range. Just hook, Q, just run away. W, run away. Hook, Q, just whatever. Right, just avoid fighting him. Avoid staying in his passive. Get out of his passive. Right, as long as you have the move speed advantage, you should have the advantage when it comes to getting away from him and also hopefully dodging his Qs. I guess Mordekaiser, the best way to dodge his Qs is to use vision. Okay, because if you use, use vision trickily and you have ghost up, you can very easily just avoid his cues because Mord Q, although it kind of seems like a brain dead kind of ability, you really need to know where the enemy is and where they're going to land it. A way that I don't recommend dodging it is sticking close to his model because that's where the Q hitbox is smallest, but this means you're in range for his all attacks and his passive, which do a lot of damage on their own. So I'd rather just recommend you just dodge his cues naturally, right? So yeah. Nothing much to comment on here. Nasus. Nasus is harder than he looks to fight because when Nasus has his level ult, level six, or his ultimate up, he just straight kills you with it. It's the same story with the Mordekaiser in that without his ultimate, he's nothing. With his ultimate, he just straight beats you. Now, I think the easiest way here is to just... You gotta fight like you're poking him, right? I don't, I don't think I need to give you advice for pre-six Nasus, but... When, when you're dealing with an Asus with ultimate, you gotta fight like you're not gonna go for all-ins. You gotta fight like you're going for trades, right? And you only go for the all-in when you get like 3-4 stacks on him and he's not really retaliating properly, he's trying to stack off the minions, okay? Because if you go for full-on all-in and he gets you a mid-range and then he Ws you, you're gonzo, okay? Because if he has ghost too, that you usually do, it doesn't matter if you ghost, if you hook W, he's just gonna catch up to you and then just Q-spam you to the death, okay? So you gotta be very careful. A trick you can do is get tenacity because tenacity reduces his wither's length. Although that's like a bit of a like a cheese tactic, right? I'm not too sure how well that works. Although I'm very much willing to give it like because in in theory it makes sense, right? Because his W is the thing that stops you from getting away from him, right? 
and his Q damage is insane either way, regardless if you have Tabis or not. So you might as well just go for the tenacity, stack it up in your runes and stuff, and just basically be impervious to his wither, right? Have it last, I don't know, two seconds instead of five. So that's like the, like the kind of understanding behind it in terms of that technique. If that works, then you can very easily just get away from him when he's ulting you. Just hook him, run the wither out, and then just run away. And then when he has his ultimate no longer, then you can just get back in and just mash him to bits, right? He can't do much. So yeah. Nico kind of just plays like other ranged top laners, but she's just worse because if you get the hook on her, she's essentially just dead. And also, if you can ghost and dodge her skill shot, the thing that goes through the minions and stuns you, you can just maul her. A tip is that if you attack the Nico and she uses her clones, the real one will have the stacks on her. So that's how you can differentiate between not just Nico, but all the stack champ like the, the clone champions, like your Shakos, your Leblancs, you know. The one that has the bleed on them is the real one. So, yeah. Um, honestly, just respect their abilities, get D-Shield, and every time you have Ghost Up, it should be a free kill. Olaf. This one is a hardcore skill matchup. The better player will win. Um, it's kind of like Wavy. Okay, so level one, he has the advantage. Okay, you don't want to give him too much... Like, you, you don't want to be too aggressive against them level 1. Because level 1, what you can do is you can just land his Qs. And because you don't have a W or anything to kind of manage that, to slow him and stop him from getting to his hatchet so you can get space to actually dodge the next one, he's going to land every single one. And when he lands every single one, you're as good as dead. So give him his space early on. Don't be too aggressive, Okay. Level 2 and level 3 is where you become stronger. Because level 2 and level 3, you get your slows. And your slows are devastating against the Olaf. Because what you can do is, let's say he queues into you and he starts to fight. Now he's going to run straight to his hatchet. What you can do is W him or hook him so he's farther away from his hatchet. Then This means that you can move farther away from him and ghost up. And this gives you space to actually dodge his hatchets. And when he misses his hatchets... He straight up doesn't have the damage to kill you anymore, okay? Without hatchets, you kind of just maul him, right? Obviously not like a stat check face-to-face -face because he does have his um, low health or attack thing, the attack speed that you kind of don't want to feed into. It's kind of like fighting a Warwick, right? So you don't want to feed into that kind of low health attack speed kind of thing. So do keep like um, kiting him. Only go for the finishing blow when you're ready to actually put him down in that one attack. You, you do things like hooking him away from his axe. And when he's ulted... Things kind of change, but not really. So if he's ulted, he can actually straight up just kill you if he lands all of his Qs. He's one of those champions. But if he misses a single Q, the fight is over. Because if he misses one Q, you have the option to just straight up run away from him. Just run away from him and his hatchet. And now, because his ultimate only lasts 2.5 seconds, you don't have to keep away from him for that long to be able to kill him. Just long enough, and then you get back in, hook, Q, whatever, and you put him in his place, okay? It's ultimately a skill matchup, in my opinion, right? But Olaf does come back a bit. It's, it's, I would say it's usually just here. It's you favored. But later on, Olaf does come back in the 1v1, because if he's just ulting and he, he's landing his Qs, he will kill you from an item down or something insane like that. Orn. I'd say Orn is probably the best tank in the game in solo queue. He's got everything. He's got decent laning, good trading, decent mobility, insane team fighting, insane team utility. But this lane isn't exactly where he shines. Now, the thing you got to understand is if the Orn steps up from like the middle of the lane, he's just dead, right? As long as you have Ghost, there isn't much this guy can do to avoid being killed by you. You will run him down constantly. But the thing is, his short trading is way better than yours. So you have to play in a way where you don't give him short trades that he likes. And the short trades he likes are Q pokes, him standing far away and just poking you down with his Q, with his Q and him doing like a full range W, auto attacking you, and then just eating away. Okay, you don't want to give him these. You want to just only be in position in his range when you're ready to all in him, okay? A few things you can do. 
Number one, you can hook him out of his W, uh, out of his E, I mean. So if he mistimes it, or if you have the tenacity, then you can't just hook him out of it. And two, this one's a bit tricky, but if you have Ghost, you can straight up just dodge his W. Not a lot of people even try because it's kind of like a difficult to dodge ability. But the easiest way to do it is if you are in melee range with him, right? The second he triggers his W, Ghost and just run through him. <laughs> I know it sounds stupid, but it's the easiest way to dodge his W because Orn walks forward when he's doing the W, right? So if you just walk straight into his model and you can because Ghost makes it so that you can walk through models, then you're now behind him <laughs> and you're ready to just straight up maul him while he's still in his W animation. So that's like the most, <laughs> most fun way <laughs> to dodge his W. Um, let me think. You can, if he is ulting, and the, the ult soul ghost thing is about to reach him, you can hook him, and the stun will mean so that he can't recast the ultimate to get another stun on you. That's a nice little technique to know. Um, also, I've heard this stupid comment, like, okay, so <laughs> you gotta build tenacity against Orn, and I've had some moron in one of my comments that should be like, Elvis, <laughs> CCR knockups. But, okay, like, the way Orn works is that he puts a brittle on you, the thing that he claps with his W, and that increases the duration of his CC. So you gotta kind of counteract that, or else he's gonna get too much space to mess with you, right? You need tenacity. Um, <laughs> yeah, there isn't really any item requirements or anything you gotta get specifically. You just gotta not give him good short trades and punish him when he does step up. Your ghost is your friend here, because your ghost lets you turn like kind of these short engagements into all-ins that you really wanna exp uh, exploit. So yeah, Pantheon. Pantheon is a tough matchup if the Pantheon player knows what he's doing. Pantheon, he gets a lot of range early with his Q. So he, he can just basically never even fight you and just tap Q you to oblivion when you're trying to farm. He can toss you know his Qs at you when you're trying to farm. He can go for quick traits and get away because his E gives him move speed, right? He goes in W, auto, 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 Q, auto, I think. Is it four stack? It's four stack. Like W, auto, 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 Q. And then he just ease away and gets out of that situation the second you try to queue back or something. So it's definitely not a favorable matchup. You want to mostly play safe earlier on. And the second you get to level three, you can kind of just gauge whether you want to fight him or not. If he has his passive, don't fight him, okay? Because his passive gives him the ability to get two empowered abilities. But if he doesn't have his passive because you dodged a queue or something, then you can just ghost up to him and go for a fight. A thing you can do is actually hook him out of his stun. So when he W jumps on you to stun you, you can hook him out of it. Best case scenario, if you time it well, you can cancel it and you don't get stunned. Or at least you can do, the least you can do is make it so that because you're both stunned, he can't go for the Artek, 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 Q kind of combo, right? So using hook properly and stuff is definitely a good idea. And please, for the love of God, do not have your ult be blocked by his E, okay? You can try to get it out before you need to ult, like try to just keep fighting him, and then when he E's, then you ult, and then get in position to ult properly. But my recommendation is straight up just, like, either ult early, or just do what I just said in that you get him to use his E first, and then you ult. It's just that... He's so strong, and when he gets the Eclipse, it's even more over, that what usually happens is you're dead by the time you can even get him to use Z because you'll kill him other way. otherwise. One thing to note is you gotta buy a ton of armor in this lane. Armor is your friend. If you have a lot of armor, that kind of neuters his um, damage by quite a bit. Now, mind you, just Tobby's is not enough because a lot of his damage is just his Q. So what's really good is trying to go for, like, flat armor, right? Bramble Vest, not Bramble Vest, um, Warden's Mill is good, Chain Vest is good. Um, that item that builds into Death Stance is okay. Like, just straight up armor, right? If you have a decent amount of armor, you will just straight kill him in the all-in with your ultimate. But it's a very much a skill kind of matchup in that you gotta dodge his Qs, you gotta outplay things. If you don't, if you just tank everything, he just straight kills you, Okay. And given that he has superior range, and that basically only one tricks and insane people play him, 
you're most likely not going to fight someone who's like clueless on him, right? So really not Darius favored. And if he's played well, then you're basically not going to kill on him. And you're not going to get a kill on him at all. Poppy. Not sure if there's anything for me to even say here. She's a pretty free champion to just straight kill. <sighs> Do I have to say anything? <laughs> I mean, nobody plays Poppy top because she sucks. But um, cue her when she's in the range for it. W her, don't stand on her, hammer things, and for the love of God, don't stand between her and a wall. Please, don't give her the free stuns. Quintop. Quintop is, it's not the hardest range matchup, but it's definitely up there. She has her headbutt thing, and it's it's a kind of a bug, but it cancels your W. Okay, her headbutt, if you start your W on her and she does that thing, it just cancels your W. Which, nothing in the game works like that. Nothing in the game is supposed to work like that, but it just does. So, the general idea against Quinn is all about your hook, okay? You gotta hook her, and my recommendation is to go for a hook Q, okay? Hook EQ, and what you can do after she headbutts into you, because she will immediately out of the hook, is just run up towards her ghost and kill her, right? This is doable, especially if you have ultimate. If you have ultimate, you can just, like, demolish her like this. And the thing is, if a jungler helps you get a kill on the Quinn, then the lane is kind of easy because you get access to a ninja tabi, and a ninja tabi completely counters Quinn. Now, she will be annoying. You can't just kill her the second you see her because she gets a ton of free move speed in her, in her um, kit. But when you are able to just ghost up to her, when you have ghost up, you can kill her every time depending on the cooldown of your ghost. So... Really one of the less punishing range matchups, but the more difficult part of it, it comes in that the second she hits level 6, she's going to be all over the map, she's going to help everyone, she's going to get kills, and she'll be back in time to collect the lane top. So it's not a top laner that you can punish normally. She's very much like, kind of a cheater, right? And her being picked into a lane like Darius is her ideal case because she gets a free laning phase if she's playing it carefully, okay? You don't want to give her that. You have to try to kill her at least once or twice, ideally, before level 6. So that when she does go roam, she's weaker than everybody. And that you're strong enough to actually do stuff when you are in fights. And you, you do want to try to participate in fights and kind of do stuff outside the top lane. If you don't, she's going to roll over your team and your team's not going to be able to do anything. Renekton. A real, true, nice, fun skill matchup. In lower ranks, if both Darius and Renekton are similarly skilled, it is Darius' favorite. But if it's like a high elo Renekton and a high elo Darius, it can get to be quite a fist fight. And I love it. It's, it's straight up like a good Renekton is the most fun like player to fight. It's just so fun. You have no idea. Okay, so um, first things first. I'm just trying to find a way to approach this matchup in a way that makes sense because... A lot of my thoughts are usually chaotic. Um, in terms of the mechanics, the way the Renekton trades usually is that he wants to go for short trades. Renekton doesn't want all-ins unless he has his ultimate. And the way he goes for short trades is that he goes for a Q or a W, and then during the W stun, he will E towards you, not E towards you, he will walk up to you a bit and then E through you and then E out, okay? So, a good Renekton will always make sure to be able to get a double E. If Renekton E's out once, <laughs> he's dead. Okay, if he makes this mistake, just ghost up to him and put him in the ground. But if he's Eing up twice, you got to find a way to manage that. So first off, the first thing you can do is try to path in a way where you're not directly behind him in that you're between him and his turret. Don't do this, because if you do this, he gets a free double dash. And then he's not in your hook range anymore, okay? What you want him to do is essentially have to walk into an awkward position to get the E dash. Because if he doesn't get a good spot, then you can very much hook him out of his E, right? You want to essentially force him to use his E in a way where he's kind of curving it around just to get that E sort of second dash, okay? So that's the kind of like skill portion part of it that's kind of more like feely in that you'll know what when it happens and then you'll try to manage with it right in terms of the trades it's kind of like 
there's not much I can advise you to do because it's literally about can you land your cues? Can he land his cues? Can, can obviously he can, but it's easier to land than yours. But still, can you kite him properly? Do you know when he's you know gonna do damage? Do you respect his fury? Does he respect you when he doesn't have fury? It's these kinds of things that determine who's gonna win this lane. And I don't want you to go for Tobby's. A guy that kills him is Bramble Fest. <laughs> Bramble has Warder's Mail, or I think Warder's Mail is even worse for him because he has more armor. It just kills his damage, right? So these kinds of items are your bread and butter. But um, I'd say, honestly, just be better than him. <laughs> There's not much I can say. It's just straight up a skill matchup. Learn his abilities, respect his fury, don't give him free E escapes, and for the love of God, respect his old magic damage. His magic damage in his ult is crazy high, right? It's crazy. Don't just sit in his face and, like, just take the damage. Just kite around until you get your abilities back so you can watch out of him one go. Or even escape if you don't have the health. Because his ult magic damage is, like, like 50 to 100 per second. You'll fight him, and then you'll press the damage tab, and you'll see that a third of the damage is just you standing in the ult area. So don't give him that. Get away from it. All in all, skill matchup. Rengar. Rengar is pretty easy. You kind of just stat check, kill him. If he jumps, first off, level one, don't do anything, okay? Because level one Rengar, if he gets his um, empowered Q, he can jump on you and QQ, and that will just kill you, okay? If it means giving up the entire first, second, third wave, so be it. Because the second you get your W and, and your E, the lane is just over. When Rengar jumps into the wave, just auto WQ him, right? And the thing is, he's going to want to W and get away. If he's smart, he's going to WW and get away. So you can kind of account for this and just ghost preemptively to try to keep the Q on him. And then from this point, you just maul him. There's not really much he can do. And better, another good thing you can do is use your hook to keep him out of the bushes, right? Or if he's in a bush trying to outplay you with some mobility, just hook him out of it. Like, like your hook can basically ruin him a bit because you can save your hook after he does the W... English. Your hook is a game changer because you can save it until after he uses his W, his, his like, the Empower W, right? And by this point, you already have two, three stacks on him already, so you're gonna get your five stacks. He doesn't have his W anymore, he's gonna have to stack it up again to survive. You just blow him up, right? Not really a tough matchup at all. If the Rengar is a good player, then he might be a little tricky to play against, and by, by this I mean, if the Rengar is good enough at Rengar to the point where you can't just straight beat him, right? The life hack is literally just get anti-heal. If you get anti-heal, that messes up his W healing by quite a significant amount. <laughs> and if you can get, like, Bramble Vest, then that's even better. But I like to go for Executioner's Calling because Executioner's Calling means that as long as I have a bleed on him, he has the anti-heal on him, whereas Bramble Vest means that he can choose to not hit me if he wants that healing. So he can, he can farm minions and just WWOA the same case, right? So I prefer um, Executioner's Calling, but you can go for Bramblebus if the Rengar keeps hitting you like an idiot. So, um, yeah, I'd say if, you, if you're struggling, just get some armor, get some anti-heal, and it should be an easy matchup. You just straight up steamroll him. Riven. Riven's just pure skill matchup. Um, the better player usually just straight up wins. Riven is in a slightly better position, though, because if the Riven wins, she has more mobility, so she can kind of take better control of the early game than you as Darius. Darius is very slow, so you can't just go everywhere, where she can harass your jungler, she can go mid, and come back in time to not miss too many minions because of her Q allowing her to jump through walls. So, I guess on the map kind of game skill, it's slightly Riven favored, but all in all, it's skill. So... Um, the number one thing to do, also, this is a matchup that I specifically made a video on, right? Darius's worst matchups, and she it should have her picture on the thumbnail. So, the thing you gotta know is that you have to understand Riven's abilities. Because if you don't know what Riven's abilities do, you're gonna get destroyed, okay? You gotta understand what each ability does, what its range is, and also her most basic combo. And her basic combo is the... They, I think they call it the fast Q, the Riven players, where you do the Q and then you right click on the ground to make sure that the auto attack that you get after the Q goes out faster, right? So you Q auto attack, Q auto attack, Q auto attack, but it's like a Q click auto attack, Q click auto attack, that's like the combo, right? 
So this is Riven's main combo, and it's her main damage combo, okay? It's like, it's her bread and butter, and it's basically all of her damage. In that, if you're in Riven's melee range, and she can do this combo uninterrupted and get all of it off on you, you're dead, okay? This combo on Riven does so much damage that she will kill you from kills down. The worst thing you can do is, if a Riven has ultimate, the worst thing you can do is just hook her. Because this puts her in the perfect position to get her entire combo off on you, okay? You do not want to do this, or let her do this to you. Once you learn her Q combo, how it works, or you understand how her W works, how her ult works, and that it gives everything high range, then you are in position to start really winning this matchup. First things first, you can't really just throw your abilities in the air and you know, force a good fight. You gotta get her to waste her abilities. And the way you do this is, essentially speaking, Riven by just playing the game, uses her abilities to do stuff, right? Riven can't just, she doesn't just walk around right clicking the minions, she Qs around, she Ws, she just gets tricky kind of traits here and there. You wanna essentially kill her, or start an all-in when she's wasting her abilities on the wave or on a quick trade, because this is her vulnerable moment. Okay, when a Riven walks up to you, she wants to do a W, auto attack, and then Q, E away. And this puts her squarely outside of your hook range. What you can do here is straight up just backstep her W, because her W is like her auto attack range, and her, or her auto attack range is like lower than yours last time I recall. Just sidestep this, and then just ghost it and kill her. Because at this point, if the Riven hasn't stunned you, you can just ghost after her and then just catch her like right outside of her E. And if the Riven is queuing to get away from you, then this is your ideal case scenario because she doesn't have it for damage anymore. If the Riven is forced to use her Q to either catch up to you or get away from you, she's sacrificing her damage. So you can use this to your advantage to actually get the kill on her, okay? Also, post level six, it's almost always worth it to just get Riven's ultimate out without dying. If you can just get her to use her ultimate on a trade or whatever, or she mistakenly uses it, then it's worth it. Because without her ultimate, her her um, the amount of power she has to work with in terms of killing you, I mean, for killing you, gets significantly lowered, okay? So it's definitely worth it to waste her ultimate. Definitely kite her, right? I know it sounds crazy, but if she's ulting or she's fighting you, you want to ghost and kite her Q. Again... Q auto, Q auto, Q auto is her entire damage combo. If she wastes her Qs to just get on top of you, then that's it, you've won. Just kite her auto attacks, land your Qs, whatever, and she's dead, okay? Landing your Qs is quite important. You definitely need that heal against her kind of damage. And a good thing you can do is use your hook to cancel her third Q, because you can hook to grab her out of the air, right? And then just maul her down with it, because this, <laughs> it really messes her gameplay up. And uh, get injured hobbies. It's definitely useful. Armor is good. HP is good. Aside from that, it's just skill. The better player wins, right? So I don't really go so far as to say that there's any trick or anything that'll make you win this lane. If you understand the Riven Champion and you know how to kite her abilities or avoid them or get her to waste her abilities and then kill her, then you should be good to go. Rumble. This champion is an abomination. Um... A well-played Rumble has all the tools he needs in his kit to completely destroy you in lane. He can poke you down, his shield can give him the move speed he needs to get away from your hooks, and his flamethrower, it has such high range that it's like it's out of your Q range and it's like just barely in your hook range, okay? And the worst thing is, if the Rumble starts the fight when he has his meter in that like, let's say um, you guys fight from full health and he's at like almost about to overheat, and he does his flamethrower, and he just starts art attacking you. He will just kill you. He will straight up just kill you. It's like the most insane thing ever. I've had a Rumble who's like three kills down on me, right? I'm 3-0, I'm zero, he's 0-3, zero, and he just straight has the damage to full health kill me, and I have magic resist. This champion has insane broken amounts of damage with that kind of overheat auto attacks, okay? So you really don't want to play into that. If he has his um, heating bar, I don't know what to call it, but it's like, it's like, it's got the non-overheated part kind of warm, about to overheat, and then just the red portion where it's like, when he fills it out, where he can't use his abilities. 
So when it's in like the first half where it is just white, then you want to go in and kill him, right? If it's like this and he's in your range, just straight up ghost up and kill him. The problem is, unless the rumble has a rock for a brain, he's just going to spam his abilities to the point where that doesn't happen, okay? So it's kind of just us waiting for him to mess up and then be able to kill him. What you can do, right, is go for hook or WQ. And when he goes for the overheating, then you try to disengage from him with Ghost. And the thing is, Ghost is so long that if you just kite his flamethrower enough, you can just run back in after it's over, after the overheating's over, and he has no damage to so just straight kill him. That's like the only kind of all-in algorithm I can think of where you kind of consistently win. But this requires for him to not have a big wave, for you to have all your health, for you to land your Qs, and for him to kind of be like pushed up a bit, okay? So all in all, really messed up matchup. You don't want to stand in his ultimate. You want to get magic resist if you can spare it, but it doesn't make too much of a difference, honestly, aside from like a null mantle, because if you fight wrongly, he just straight kills you no matter what. So, yeah. Rise. Uh, I don't even know if I have to say anything here, just... His root thing puts him in, in your hook range, so you can literally hook him out of it every time and just ghost kill him. He's not even that much of a threat for the most of the game. His damage sucks. His wave clear is about the only thing that's good on him. He's really much, he's very much a jungler food top lane. Like, nobody plays this champion. I have not seen him in a while. So much to that, like, <laughs> as if to make my point for me, the second I saw that icon, I was like, who is this champion? <laughs> like, when I was making this video, like, getting a tier list. Uh, set. Set's a skill matchup. Basically speaking, if both players are lower rank, the set's going to win. If both players are higher rank, the dare is going to win. The ball is essentially in the set's court to mess up, but it's one of those matchups where Ghost changes everything. Against set, the big thing to avoid is his W. But how does he set his W up? Using his E. That's the big part then. We have to make sure that he can't set up his W with his E. We're starting our fights with our R tags, R W or whatever, going for when we can fight against us. And the thing is, although it sounds counterintuitive, if you're willing to go for a full all in, going for Q earlier on after the R W Q just to get him to E it and like you know avoid the Q is not that bad of a thing, because if you activate your Ghost after this and just kite his auto attacks. He no longer has his E to guarantee his W. So you can very easily just ghost and like avoid it. Now be very careful. If the set is kind of good, he's gonna W flash into you. So really, really be careful, okay? Don't let him do this. If you do, if he lands that full true damage of the W and he's in melee range, you're as good as dead, okay? But forcing him to use his E earlier on to kind of um dodge your Qs is a decent thing you can do. Now, if you can do this and land your Qs, it's perfect, but if the set is holding his E, right, like he's holding his E, he's not using it just yet, disengage, okay? Walk away from him. Stop the fight. Because if you keep hitting him, his W is just going to keep growing, and so is his power to put you down. And if he's holding his E, he's definitely going to walk in your minion wave and just use to guarantee his W. So definitely, definitely disengage when you get a good trade on him. Good trades are good enough because the lower the set's health is, the less strong of a W he can actually get off because his W needs him to take damage. So if he's half health or even like 70% health, that really hurts him in the long run, okay? Good trades are perfect against set. The lower HP he is, the less shield, the easier he is to kill. So really look at, keep an eye out for good trades, disengage when you need to, and don't let him guarantee his W, okay? Flash usage is very critical in this matchup. And against bad sets, a trick you can do is, if he's at like 300 health, hook, all attack, and ult kill him. This is like a trick that you can do against every single champion with like a invulnerability ability, like a shield ability, but essentially because the hook stuns the enemy, you can essentially kill them before they can get the W out. It's a really nice trick, and they usually don't expect it, and it works wonderfully if you have Triforce. With Triforce, if they're like 500 health and they have four stacks on them, or even 600, whatever, right? Hook, W, ult, and they're just dead on the spot, and they can't even W. 
Shen. Shen is quite Darius' favor, but it's kind of a different kind of difficulty because although you still have to maul Shen in basically every point of the game, get bone playing, by the way, Shen is going to be way more useful to his team than you are. And to be able to stop him from teleporting, you have to be pushed up, which stops you from getting kills against him, and it puts you in position to be ganked and killed by the jungler. So it's like a macro game of balancing it out. When there's a big fight going on, shove, 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 okay? Shove your lane, and when he's trying to ult, walk up, hook him, and get out, okay? Just hook him, cancel that ultimate, and get out of there, so that the least your team has to deal with is just the shield. Now, um, <clears throat> in terms of mechanics, there isn't really much to say. Don't make sure that your, make sure that your W isn't blocked by his, um... You know when he does the area around his sword to block our attacks? Make sure your W isn't blocked by that. Go for your Qs when he's doing that. Honestly, like, if you just hook him at any point in the lane, he's very easy to just run down with without Ghost as long as you manage your W properly. So I don't really see that. I need to give too much, like, um, advice here. Shroud's not really a top laner. If she's being played there... Actually, no, she's not a top laner. Just a killer, right? Okay, I'll just say a quick word. But if she's in her ult form, literally just stay out of her range and wait it out. Because without it, she can't do anything. Singed. Singed is a bit of an uh, annoying matchup. But you have to understand that Singed is going to want a proxy. So really, you got to watch out for Singed movements. Like, he's shoving lane and he's randomly going into the river. Right? He could be warding. But he warded two minutes ago. So what is he doing there? He wants the proxy. Having your jungler around helps significantly because Singed is essentially ganking himself if your jungler's around, right? So if you can have your jungler come top to help you kill a proxy Singed, then go do that. But you essentially have to block off Singed from proxy, okay? Level 1, walk your minions to lane because doing this lets you straight up stop him from proxying and it lets you get a good fight if he does keep proxying regardless, right? Just walk your minions to lane, protect them. And from the other levels on, whenever he walks down, just straight up, just walk into your jungle entrances, ward them, or at least stop him from getting on top of your minions, okay? Now, when it comes to all-ins, when Singed flips you, you can just hook him back, okay? If you hook backwards, you can straight up just hook him back, unless he has phase rush, okay? Unless he has phase rush. But if he does have phase rush... If you backwards look straight after the flip, you can hook him back, and then with your W, you can keep him in your range long enough for you to destroy him, okay? So, this is not really a matchup that you're really fighting. It's more so just annoying, right? He's just annoying you, okay? And if you do let him proxy, just farm under turret. There's not much you can do. You can't catch up to him. You can't run around and chase him. He's too mobile for you, especially if he's taking flash ghosts. You're never going to catch him, and all you're doing is just losing farm. Just let him proxy himself to death, right? And hope that the next time you're not going to let him proxy, all right? Just do your best to farm your minions perfectly unintered. Scion. Um, eh, Scion has been feeling more difficult than before. And I think that's because, like, tanks are just... They just straight up feel weird to play against now if you're a bruiser. Like, like I feel like if you're a bruiser, you're not killing the tanks. You're killing the tank's teammates. But the tank itself just gets too tanky to the point where you can't kill them. Right? So, Sun is just like the other tanks where you gotta just kill him before he gets his ultimate or before he gets his first two recalls or so. Because if you don't... He's going to get way too tanky for you to be able to kill him during a reasonable time frame, okay? So, all in all, not much advice needed in terms of the gameplay. Is there any advice needed? I mean, you can hook him out of his Q. You can watch out for him standing in bushes and charging up his Q, right? Always be careful when he's going to... Because this is a trick that they all do. Um, be wary of the fact that he can just ult to get away. Right? And if he's smart, he will ult towards your minion wave, clear it all, and then just ult towards your T2, and then either die there or recall there before you can even get to him. He does proxy quite a bit too. Overall, pretty stupid champion, pretty meat headed champion. He does, like, his passive is kind of just, like, broken, honestly. Because 
like his recall timer, I mean, his respawn timer starts as soon as he dies, but it still ticks down as his zombie form is farming. So he essentially has no death timer. <laughs> like it's broken. Um, so that's kind of annoying, but I don't think I need to advise much here, right? It's, he's just an annoying to fight, but you'll kill him a few times and then he'll get too tanky to kill. I think I gotta focus on out team fighting him. I think I cover this in the support section. Same, cover this in the support section. Swain. Swain is kind of in the same boat as Rise. The thing about Swain and the the reason he sucks top lane is that he can't really defend himself, right, when a champion gets on top of him. Say like a Renekton dashes on him and does W. What is what is Swain gonna do? Okay. If you say, oh, he's gonna land E and then try to kite, the thing is his E isn't guaranteed to land. Okay? And especially against some of the more floaty champions like your Rivens and stuff, they can just avoid it with one of their X number of dashes, right? And when his hook is avoided, he is just doomed. Because without the hook, he can't put distance between himself and the enemy champion, which means that he's just going to get killed, okay? So it has to play with like a full range top laner setup, like Ghost, Flash, I don't know, maybe Play Footwork 2? I don't, I don't see it as being necessary, but it can certainly help with a move speed, because you really need that move speed on Swain to actually survive in lane. Um, for Darius, literally just hook him, Ghost, run behind him, and claw his face off. There is nothing he can do against that, okay? Now, if you can't land your hooks, it might get a bit tricky. Or if you take too much damage, it might get a bit messy. Or if you let him get level 6 and you haven't killed him, then you might need anti-heal. But just hook and kill him with your ghost once, get move speed, and then that's it, right? So really not a challenge, right? I'd say I put him here, but because he's ranged and there is some downtime in that, you can't just kill him every time he's in lane. You gotta, like, wait for your... You, you gotta be able to land your hooks. You gotta have your ghost. Because of those reasons, I, I guess I can... I'll put him down here. He's just free. Silas. <laughs> Silas can't put up a fight. He's not a good top laner. He can't stand up to most meat bags. That's why he's played mid. Um nothing really to advise here. Just don't get caught by his um <laughs> just kill him. <laughs> I like trying to think about what's dangerous about him, but nothing. Cause he he functions entirely in your melee range, which is where you get to just kill him, right? You get to get your stacks on him and just walk up to him and put him down like a doggy. So yeah. Tom Kenge. Tom Kenge is, like, I'd say, a, an even sort of matchup. I'd put him in Darius' favorite, actually. But he does get, like, this is like the trend with all tank champions. They get to a point where they're just too annoying to kill, Okay. They're just too tough to kill. They're too tough to put down. So they're still going to be annoying for you to deal with, but you're, they're, they're, they're not your target, okay? Against Tom Kenj, what I personally recommend is understanding his champion and not giving in to his cheese. Tom Kenj has like a bunch of cheese tricks under his belt. Like, for example, if you have Noxium Might, Tom Kenj can do Q-Stun, right? And then eat you. And then that stun plus the eating is long enough to the point where your Noxie might just runs off, runs out, okay? So be very careful against his cheese. If he's near his turret, he can eat you and spit you out under his turret. And if you, have, if you don't have flash, you're just dead, okay? Be careful of these things. One huge mechanic is to make sure that he can't hit you with his Q, okay? Stab your minions, don't get hit by that. If you get hit by that, he gets damage, he gets some healing, I think, but if you don't get hit by it, you just win every single trade the second he walks up to farm, okay? You can hook to cancel his E. That's another good uh, mechanic. Um, aside from that, he's just another tank champion. Just grab him, put him down, and chop him to bits. Not much he can do against you aside from just cheese you. Um, let me think. Let me think. There's really nothing notable. Aside from, like, the first few kills or so... He's just going to do the same tank thing where he does get too tanky for you to kill. So do what you can in lane. Get your farm up. Get your Triforce. And destroy his team. 
And our top laner, Teemo. I'd say Teemo, if it's like a bad Teemo, or like a low rank Teemo, it's kind of easy. But if the Teemo is like one of the like the 11 Teemos in the world who know how to use his abilities properly and Kai properly, then it does get messy. Teemo, you gotta just land your hook, and then you can kill him relatively consistently off of it because his all inning power is kind of sorry. It's not that good. But <laughs> his move speed allows him to kind of circumvent that in that his move speed lets him get his auto attacks off and run out of your hook range. And if he activates the W, you're going to struggle catching him even with ghost. You can't just ghost engage on him like with other champions. You can W, waste your time. And by the time you catch him, he's practically under turret already and you can't kill him. He's going to blind you when you're trying to attack him. Blah, 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 blah. Not the most consistent matchup. And if he's really good, he's going to use his Q to poke you, okay? That's what good Teemo's too, because a bad Teemo is only going to R attack you to death. But a great Teemo is going to Q you with max range whenever he has it up, just to get the damage off on you. Because even if you do engage on him after he lands his Q, he's going to have it back up again by the time you're even getting to fighting him. So that's what smart Teemo's are going to do. The key to Teemo, or this matchup, is... You look for a moment when he's auto-attacking you, okay? And in this moment, you have to hook and you have to catch him. What can be really helpful is Nimbus Cloak. I know we want to take second wind in this matchup, but what Nimbus Cloak can do is that that burst of move speed from Nimbus Cloak that you get on Ghost will allow you to actually straight up get into range with a hook and catch him, okay? And the thing is, you no longer have to actually get in range, because if he pauses a, or attacks me and just runs with W, and you don't have Nimbus, there is a bit of a chase until you get to him. Now with Nimbus. You can also substitute that for a Swifties, but I've seen that Teemos themselves go Swifties a lot, so I might have to go for both. Don't take a lot of damage for no reason. Um, This is a ranged top laner, so in the video Darius' Worst Matchups, I do have an explanation for ranged top laners under the um, range matchup section. So go check that out if you want more, inf if you want more information. But um, I'd say generally, it's all about you landing your hook. If you're able to land it, good job. If you're not able to land it, you're in trouble. If you miss your hook, he's going to destroy your health bar. So really don't miss it. If you're insecure about landing it, don't even use it, okay? Don't gamble it, because if you do miss it, he will go to town in your health bar. Swifties are really useful. They let you not run into his shrooms post-6, so that's um, a thing to be reminded of, but you do want to pick up control wards so you can actually get vision, right? A lack of yellow wards is not good. Teemo's also kind of jungler food, right? He can't really do too much. He, like, if he gets hit by CC, he is done so, right? But he can kind of set up a perimeter with a shroom so your jungler has to be kind of clever in how they path top so not very consistent overall he's not the most difficult range top laner and i'd say he's one of the more fair range top laners to fight where if you mess up against the teemo you know why you lost okay right you know okay if i did this properly i would not have died here so i'd say like he is straight up one of the fair range top laners and a good teemo is to be respected so yeah because <clears throat> there's not a lot of them. Most of them are trash. Trundle. Trundle is such an annoying meathead. He beats you level 1 with his brain dead Q auto, Q auto, Q auto. He beats you level 6 when he just zucks your stats out of you. So where's our opening? Our opening is when we have our W, Q, and E. Level 3, essentially. Because this is a matchup where you want to kite. You don't want to sit in his face and all in from full health. You want to kite, 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 kite. Run around him, go in for a Q, go in for a W, and then keep running. Don't let him just get his attacks off on you because he will kill you. He will win. His frost zone gives him attack speed. He goes lethal tempo. His Q is basically an attack reset. It's, it's messed up, okay? Don't give him what he wants, which is just him wailing on your health, okay? Kite him, and if you do kite him properly, you can kind of just get this kind of in and out sort of style, and then essentially wear him down and kill him, okay? It's a very kite-heavy style. You can't just full health kill him, okay? So, I wish there was more I could say. Strybreaker helps a lot in this matchup, but I feel like in this meta, 
you can't afford to be building against your top laner. You got to build in a way that, that makes you good at killing the enemy team. If you're building exclusively ex exclusively to fight your enemy top laner, you're going to perform worse in team fights, and then that's going to affect your ability to win games. So that's the thing to keep in mind. Um, Tobbies are good. Bramble Vest is okay. Warden's Mail is legendary into him. But he kind of eats your tank stats up too. <laughs> Right with his ultimate. So I think the best thing to do is to just play better. Okay? Play better than him. If you can't kill him, you don't have to fight him. That's the thing. He's one of those champions that scales up to beat you in the side lane late, later on eventually. Right? He's just too annoying, too strong in the side lane to beat. You don't have to walk up to him and fight him. You can just avoid him. You cannot deal with him. You can just, again, not fight him. You don't have to fight him. So keep this in mind. Okay? Keep in mind that... I don't have to fight him. I can just clear this wave and go fight with my team, okay? Overall, not a fun time. Trindamir. I'd say Trindamir is kind of us favored, but very much up here. I'd put it into skill matchup because Trindamir has essentially infinite sustain, okay? As long as there are minions to auto attack, and there will always be minions to auto attack when you crash him into his turret. The trade that you just did against him will have been a waste of time. So against Trinda, you're not fishing for short trades. You're constantly fishing for big all-ins, okay? First things first. Don't let him stack up his fury. A trick that Trinder can do level 1 is he'll wait for all the minions to be low HP, the melees, and then he will directly spit on you and cheese kill you, okay? Don't, don't fall for this cheese. This cheese can be quite devastating, so... Because him hitting all the minions and killing the three minions gives him fury, okay? So don't fall for that cheese. But if you're talking like a normal laning situation, respect his fury, okay? The best thing you can do against Trindamir is a freeze outside your turret because Trindamir needs to hit the wave to get his fury, okay? But if you pull off a freeze, for him to walk up to lane, he has to walk into your range, okay? And when he goes for minions, you can actually attack him. Oh, another trick. Another trick that Trinamirs do is they go for an auto attack on you and then E-dash away, okay? What you can do is fall for this like twice, right? And the third time they do it, you can just hook him, like you can hook and cancel his E-spin and get a free kill. It's like, it's, like, it's kind of like conditioning in a fighting game where you teach your opponent that they can get away with this and then you just punish them and get that kill. And Trinamir is a very snowballing matchup. The guy who gets the kill first kind of like controls how the rest of the lane goes, okay? Because if he gets the kill first, he's going to constantly go for stupid trades, heal all up, and kill you under turret with his ultimate. If you get the first kill, you're going to constantly like keep him away from the wave, freeze the wave, and not let him breathe, okay? So it's very much whoever gets the first kill wins. A trick you can do, right, and this is a stupid trick, is get, get anti-heal. Okay, now let me explain. When Trinamir ults, he has your Noxiumite on him, right? And the Trinamirs, what they do is they save their Q after the fight is over. Either they've won or he's getting away to then, like, live through your bleed stacks, right? What the, what the, what the anti-heal will do is that it will, like, mitigate that heal to the point where your bleed stacks will just straight up kill him. <laughs> So that's like a little life hack thing you can do to kind of counter him in lane. Um, Tobbies are really good. Warden's Mail is really good. If you're struggling with a Trinomir, get Frozen Heart. Frozen Heart ruins this guy's life. Okay? The armor is bad. The ability haste lets you get your slows and ease off better. But the <laughs> attack speed slow is so tasty. It ruins his life. So definitely go for it if you are struggling against him. And Frozen Heart is so cheap that it's not really sending you back that much. And in fact, if the enemy team has any auto attack damage, it's straight up worth it because it's probably one of the items we're going to get at some point in that match anyway. I'd say the, the, the person who plays the early game better is going to win this matchup. Okay, So just manage his fury and manage how he gets his fury and punish his tricks. Udyr top, just kill him. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like this isn't really a challenge at all. 
Just don't underestimate his damage with his blue form. And don't stand in his, like, tornado form thing that follows you too much. Don't take free damage, but just kill him. He's just a melee top laner who can't do too much against you. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Urgot. Urgot is basically just Illawi. There is very little difference between the Urgot matchup and Illawi matchup. It's that binary. If he lands his flip, he kills you. If he misses his flip, you kill him. Except his flip is significantly easier to land than Illawi's tentacle. Because you can't, like, just block it with minions, right? <laughs> and he gets a shield with it, and he sets up his other shotgun knees. It's not a matchup that I find fun at all, because it's so binary and just skillless. It's literally just, does he land his flip? All right, kill him. Oh, he didn't, oh, he did land it? Okay, I'm dead. Like, like, it's just, like... It's really annoying. You can go for Warden's Mail, Frozen Heart. It kind of messes him up quite a bit, and I recommend it, right? Every single time against Ur Urgot, just skip the Tobbies and just get the Warden's Mail so that you can survive a bit longer against him if you do get flipped. You can get both Tobbies and Warden's Mail if you want. But a general idea is just use your Ghost intelligently. Now, one thing you can do, right, is an Urgot is going to want to flip you under his turret. So what you can do is if he dashes into you for the flip, is to just flash out of his way so he goes the full duration of the flip and now he's out of his turret for you to kill. It's like a cheese thing you can do. So definitely keep an eye on for it if you're in position to kill him. Like he has four stacks. You're pushing him under the turret. You're just outside of his turret range. He charges up his flip. You flash to the side. He misses it. And now he's so outside of his turret range that even if he flashes back, you can still go for the Noxium Might, or attack Q, ult, whatever you need to actually kill him and put him down, okay? Urgot can straight up kill you when he's a few kills down, just if he lands his flip and she's you, so really respect the bushes, respect his flip even if he's behind. It's just like Illaoi, okay? Treat him like you will treat Illaoi. Nothing, like, like mechanics-wise, depth-wise, it's basically just, it plays the same. Vayne. Vayne is our kind of arch nemesis. This champion should be your top ban under essentially all circumstances. Vayne counters Darius in every single way. And honestly, there is nothing you can do. Okay? I know it sucks. You can go for Tobbies. You can go for some Warden's Mail or whatever. But that's not going to help. Okay? Because... Vayne is still going to waste your time in her ultimate, and she's still going to kill you. Now, if you're able to hook the Vayne consistently, then there might be a conversation for this lane being playable. But a good good Vayne is not going to let you do that. A good Vayne is going to kite you until the end of time. She gets so much move speed that she can get in and out and dash out. Like, she goes in, attacks you, and just Q dashes out before you can get the other attack in. Before you can get the hook in, right? It's not doable. It's not playable. It's not possible. And even if your jungler helps you, and this is the worst part, if your jungler helps you kill her a few times, she will still kill you the second she gets her first item, right? This champion is designed to mess up beefy little bruisers like you, okay? So definitely, 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 definitely play back, play safe, play with your jungler, and tank up. You're not going to carry this game. I'm sorry, but... This is what happens when this kind of champion is picked against you, okay? She will counter everything you do. There is virtually no hope, okay? Now, if you want more information on this matchup specifically, in that how to play against ranged champ laner, like generally how to play against ranged top laners, I have made a video on this topic. So look up Darius's worst matchups. I think I'll link that in this video, right, in the description. So Darius's worst matchups and just look at the section where I talk about how to deal with range top laners, and it's just messy, man. It's not, it's, it's like, it's the part of the game that makes you have fun for playing League of Legends. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I wish there was more I could say, but not really. Vladimir. Vladimir is kind of here, but keep in mind, when I say skill matchup, I mean just the boring matchup, because this champion, actually, I think it's more Darius' favorite, because Okay, so, my life hack against Vladimir is Swifties, okay? 
Now, allow me to elaborate. So against Vladimir, his pool is his bread and butter because what it allows him to do is if he gets hooked by you, he can go for a Q, E, and then go into pool. And because the pool itself does damage, that activates phase rush. So you can just run out while being invulnerable, while slowing you. Because the pool does slow you if you step inside of it, okay? And this puts him out of your range of influence, and he's going to ghost out if you ghost after him. So it's not a match where you can consistently catch up to him and kill him. Unless you have Swifties. Because with Swifties, you are landing that hook every single time, okay? You're always going to be able to hook him. And when you get him to constantly pool, that's like 20% of your health gone every single pool. So, and the Swifties lets you walk over his pool and not get slow as much, and it gives you more move speed than him so you can more consistently catch up to him. It's just a life hack in this matchup. Definitely get Swifties if you're struggling. But honestly, you shouldn't be struggling. Vladimir doesn't put up a fight, right? He just is annoying. He farms. But he kind of also leaves you alone in lane. He doesn't really do too much against you either because he can't, right? So if you're struggling to land your hooks, Swifties is an option. But in my opinion, there isn't really too much to be said against this matchup. Volibear. Okay. Volibear is one of those matchups that I specifically made a video on in terms of how to play against. So definitely go check that out if you... um are struggling with this matchup specifically and want a dedicated video there's the worst matchup he's gonna be in the thumbnail i think or not i don't know, just it's one of those videos one of those two anyway volley bear volley bear matchup is on paper a counter to darius okay like on paper volley bear's entire kit counters your entire kit because look his e does a ton of damage and it shields him his Q is a point and click stun that you can't hook him out of. You can't hook him out of this, okay? If you hook him, you better do it with a, like the auto range of his hook. Okay, so let's, let's say that your, like your hook has your melee range and then outside the melee range. You want to hook him with the outer area of your hook because if you hook him with the inner area, he will just straight up unstoppable Q stun you, okay? Once he stuns you, He's going to activate his E to land on top of you as your stun. So you get hit by his stun. You get hit by his W. You get hit by his E. You're chunking at the half health. And he just has a W on you. So he's going to continue mauling you. Just on paper, Volibear's kit counters Darius. But there's one thing that counters and allows you to avoid every single thing in Volibear's kit. And that is Ghost. Ghost fundamentally counters everything Volibear has. It lets you outrun his Q. It lets you avoid his E. It lets you avoid his ultimate or keep up with his ultimate. It lets you kite his W, run it out before, like walk around until it wears off and then go back in. It lets you outplay fundamentally every single thing in his kit. So what you want to do is really use your ghost to your advantage. First off, do not start fights in melee range, I swear to God. Because if you're starting fights in melee range, he gets an instant Q and E off on you, okay? Keep him out of your melee range. Go for Qs. Go for Qs with the edge of your Q. And if he starts his Q and starts running towards you to be able to get the stun off on you, then you press Ghost and you start running backwards. Land the Q, right? Wear his Q off. Just run around him until he's done with his Q. And when he's no longer in that stun position, then you can just run back in, auto him, sidestep his E, then just maul him, okay? Without his Lee landing on top of you, he is just dead. He is brown bread. Volibear is also really weak level 1, so you can definitely just walk up to him and beat his face in, like straight up, unless he's taking some sort of lethal tempo cheese, then he might be able to kill you level 1, but I'm not too sure how that works with the new nerfed lethal tempo changes, so I'll have to try those out, but you straight up do just beat him level one. So there's definitely that as a big advantage because most of the don't know that you beat them level one. So we'll just walk up and all attack the wave. Just walk up and W, just kill him, right? Um, There's not really too much to say because if you don't have your sums, you're kind of at a disadvantage, okay? Because you can't really start a fight against him, right? You can't cue him to start a fight. You can't hook him. You can't do anything. 
you're kind of just there to farm. You're just farming until you have your ghost. Now, you kill him on ghost cooldown, but without ghost, you kind of don't, okay? Also, um, like, if you're fed, let's say that you kill him two, three times, then you can basically just ignore the fact that he can QE kill you, right? Like, so if he lands Q on you and E on you, he just does straight kill you, but you can kind of tank more if you're ahead of him. Like, he's not like those champions like your Illawis, your Urgots, your Olafs, where if they just smash their heads against their keyboard and land their abilities, it doesn't matter how behind they are, they will just kill you. Volibear isn't like that. If he is behind, you can more easily just kill him, and you don't necessarily need Ghost, provided you do land your Qs. That's kind of crucial. Don't want to miss your Qs. So, yeah. Again, I have a dedicated video on this topic, so definitely check that out. Also, I have a dedicated video on Tom Kench as well, and the Wukong. Okay, so, I'll mention this at the beginning of the video. I'll mention this at the beginning of the video, that I have matchup videos on a bunch of champions already, so that, <laughs> like, because I find myself, like, for the seventh time mentioning this. Anyway, um, Warwick. Warwick is... I say I put Warwick here. More accurate. I'd put Warwick in... I'll put Warwick in enemy favorite, right? Warwick is a disgusting, mouth-breathing, meathead champion that is only played by people who enjoy being spat on in the middle of the street. Okay? <laughs> like, I... <laughs> I hate this champion with everything in my soul because it's essentially taking all the fun out of top lane because he automatically wins every single situation because of how his kit works, okay? So, a few things. Number one, you kind of want to play with the very max range of your Q, okay? Because that allows you to get your Qs off on him without him being able to get his Q to kind of dodge your Q. Because he can kind of just bite and stay on you and get behind you with his Q, right? You don't want to let him do this. You want to just go for your very edge Qs, okay? Now, the thing is, you can kind of poke him down to middle-ish health. But from that point on, there's not really too much to be done. Because from that point on, you got to just all in him and kill him. And the way to do that is to, like, if you don't have your ghost, you can't kill him when he's low health. Because Warwick heals so much when he's low health, that if you just fight him, and he's constantly auto attacking you, you don't have the damage to kill him, okay? You only do so when you have ghosts. Now, if the Warwick is, I was going to say smart, but just, if the Warwick is both someone who likes being spat on, and he has no parents, what he's going to do is the second he's low HP, he's going to start auto attacking minions and healing 50 health per auto attack. So if he's good enough to do this, then there's nothing you can do to kill him in lane, even with Ghost. But let's assume that he's not doing this or that you have anti-heal. What you can do is you can use your Ghost to just go in and out, or you can kite him, land your Qs, go for Ws, and then just put him down with some ability. Don't just go for like... I'm going to get two auto attacks and kill him. He will out auto attack you. You definitely want to go for the one or two abilities that kill him instead of an auto attack meat fest. Okay. Avoid his auto attacks. Try your best to avoid Qs and try your best to not get hit by his E fear. Right. And don't dump a lot of damage onto the fear itself. It is a waste. Okay. If he's ulting you, you can actually hook him off of yourself. So if he's going for a max range ult, just E towards him. And because E can't be canceled, you will literally hook him off of yourself and his E won't go off. But this is more easier said than done because if a Warwick does this like a melee range, you really have to be keeping like, like you have to be like, your reactions have to be on the point and you have to be expecting it. And then you can do it, okay? So really pay attention when he's level six and he's in position to ult you. Don't waste your hook and try your best to kind of just see the ult coming, okay? Try your best to get into the mind of the Warwick in that, oh, if I was a brain dead, double digit IQ troglodyte, when would I ult? Just try to get yourself in that kind of headspace, okay? So, yeah. Um, <laughs> like, I really hate champions that take the fun out of top lane 
and Warwick takes the fun out of top lane. It's just not fun, okay? The good thing is about the matchup is that he's not that useful outside of top lane because what does Warwick do on the map, okay? He doesn't do that much damage. His CC is just his ultimate, so he suppresses one person, and it's so easily cancelable. If someone just CCs him, it's over, right? And I guess his roams are pretty good because he can just run with, like, the low health thing. But unless you're playing in, like, the lowest of elos, everyone's gonna, <laughs> gonna know if a Warwick is coming for them because he literally announces it. So if you can just survive laning phase, you'll be more useful than the Warwick, okay? So that's the least you can do. Survive, get your items, and you'll outperform in teamfights, definitely, okay? Wukong. This one is not a matchup I've seen in a while. I know they've buffed him recently, but... Yeah, no. I've not seen Wukong in a long, long time. I made a dedicated video on him. That's one, so keep an eye out for that. But, um... Okay, I'll just try to explain it like normal. Okay, so Wukong has one of the best lever lever <laughs> level six English. Wukong has one of the best level six power spikes in the entire game. His ultimate is a it's a stun, it's damage, it's a knock up, so you can't do much against it. It's everything, and he can get his clone to do it too for even more damage. So the name of the game is to try to get a kill on him before level six. Level one. It's kind of fightable to kill him, right? It, kind of. Because, look, okay, when he does that ability that dashes onto you, that cancels your auto attacks. I'm not kidding. It cancels your auto attacks. So be sure not to have that cancel your auto attacks, right? Don't go for Qs on him because he will just jump into you. That's regardless of the circumstance. Don't give him free Qs, like he's queuing and getting a free auto attack up on you. Try to freeze outside your turret so you can go for Qs on him without him being able to jump on you. Get ninja tabbies, and I think with Ghost, he's pretty easy to just run down and kill eventually, right? So if you have Ghost, even if he does jump on you, you can just kill him. And your bleed stacks, if they're on him, they will tick and let you know if he's in the fight or if he's just trying to get away. So there's that. Um, Overall, I think this one is not too much of a challenge on its own. Just, like, if you could just kill him pre-6... You're good to go. But not just the challenge, but it's kind of a skill matchup, I guess. But it's more so in our favor. Now, one big asterisk. I don't know how this matchup has changed after the buffs. Because no one plays this champion. Okay? So if he does end up being a big, tough skill matchup, there's definitely a chance for that. But I haven't played against him to see it. Okay? So... Keep this with a grain of salt in that he could be at this tier. Yasuo, really free matchup. He has to be so much better than you just to survive laning phase. First off, don't mess with him level 1. That is his strongest point because Yasuo essentially gets twice your auto attacks. Lethal Tempo reduces the, the, the cooldown of his Q as well. So the second you get into the fight, and he gets into his chop shop mode of just spamming his auto attacks, then you are gone. So respect his level 1. Don't mess with him too much. Just go for Qs. Now the level 2, he's going to get his E. And at this point, you want to just get off your lane completely. Because when he gets his E, he's going to definitely dash into your minions and get a good trade off on you and half health you, and then back off, right? You don't want to do this. If the, if the Yasuo has Ignite... Then if and he's able to do this, then he actually has a decent way of killing you. But once you get level three, and you have like eighty percent of your health at least, or seventy that could work too, if you land your Qs, then you should you should just straight up kill him, irregardless of the circumstance. His W is useless against you. You can get armor to completely negate his damage. If he has a tornado and he has his ultimate, you can just hook him as he's throwing the tornado, and now he can't. Uses ultimate, whereas you can just still keep following him with ghost and run him down and ult kill him. He is just there for you to get fed off of, right? He's one of those champions that no longer belongs in top lane because of how, you know, um, not weak, but just they can't do anything against you. Okay, so 
yeah, just survive the level one, get your tabbies, and don't waste your ghosts, because every time you have ghosts, you can just get a free kill on him. And once you get the first free kills and you get your ninja tabbies, you kill him every time he walks up to lane, okay? He is weakest when there are no minions around, by the way, because that's his mobility. So if you can catch him in, like, a tri brush or something, definitely just start a fight there, because he has no mobility to, to, like, waste your time, and he's such a free kill. Be careful to not miss your Qs, though. EQs are your friend, or just use your ghost to kind of, like, land your Qs, even despite him eating into you, right? Don't get hit by his tornado and get ulted, because that gives him a lot of damage, and then he can actually kill you with Ignite. But I don't even think I need to give all this advice. He is free, all right? <clears throat> Yorick. Yorick basically counters Darius, but it's not that hard of a counter. It's just... What he does after laning phase is so far separate from what you do after laning phase that it's like comparing apples to oranges, okay? So, first off, early lane, pre-6, you have the advantage. So definitely push your strength, okay? Try your best to get a kill before 6. Now, after 6, the second he gets Maiden, the lane is over. Not because you lose, but because York, all he's going to do is going to walk up, shove the lane, and leave and farm something else. That's all he's going to do, and you're just going to be under your turret farming. It's such a boring, stupid lane. And in side lanes, you're basically just going to be matching him in that you're going to clear his minions. And that's kind of it, right? There's nothing really fun in terms of just the general playstyle, but let's talk about some of the more mechanic -y stuff. Now, this is one of those matchups where I have made a dedicated video, so go check that out. But aside from that, um, <clears throat> you want to dodge his E. Now, the thing is, his cage and his E... The, okay, so I don't know which one is his cage and which one is his, like the thing that aggroes the ghouls, but both those abilities set up each other, Okay. They set up each other. If he lands the cage, it sets up the ghost, th the ghoul thing. If he lands the ghoul thing, it sets up the cage. So you really want to just use your ghost to engage on him when he misses his E. When he misses his E, he should just be dead in front of you, regardless of if he has Maiden or not. It is one of those, like, allowing matchups where if he lands this ability, he kills you. If he doesn't, he dies, right? So just keep an eye out for those kind of abilities. And always dodge sideways, okay? The ability is thin. And it's kind of like, it's away from him, okay? So you gotta dodge circularly around the Yorick to have the best chance of dodging that ability, okay? Sorry, I bumped the mic. But yeah, once you dodge that ability, it's just a matter of running him down and chopping him to bits, okay? And that is basically it. But, but, but again, as I mentioned in the beginning of the section, there's gonna be very little circumstances where he is actually in front of you, laning like a normal human. He's gonna farm, leave, you're gonna farm, farm, leave. It's just so boring, right? I would recommend trying not to roam too hard. Obviously you wanna roam and stuff, you wanna get into team fights, but be very careful. His split push is really strong, okay? He gets turrets very quickly, and if you're not there to defend the turret, he just gets the turret himself, okay? so. Definitely watch out for that. Overall, it's one of the more tough champions to deal with on a map scale because his split push, you can't shove as hard as him. So he pushes way harder than you. If you go for a team fight, and unless you win that team fight, he will just, it will be worth for them because he will get a turret in him and he can also just end on his own. And the best part, he can do all this while being behind. Even if you kill him two, three, four times, he can still do all this. So. Fun champion, right? But it's something you gotta just kind of manage. You gotta gauge whether it's more important to let him have the split push or more 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 important to like um, let the enemy have the objective. And having a solid team really helps. If your team sucks and no one can deal with a York split push, then it's over, right? But if you have a solid mid laner, for example, what I recommend is have that mid laner deal with the Yorick. If they're like a ranged mage, they can most certainly do this because they can clear the wave safely without getting into Yorick's range to get hit by him, right? And what this allows for you to do is this mage farms in the side lane and you're there to carry the fight, okay? So you're gonna micromanage your teammates a little bit and see if there's someone else on your team that can lane against this Yorick when he is split pushing, right? So if you have a mage with teleport, there's the perfect option. Not only can they deal with the Yorick split push, but if you really need them in that fight, they can teleport in. So 
A bit of teamwork can go a long way when it comes to dealing with this big meathead. Zack Top. I'd say that this is... Skill matchup, Zack is really annoying. He has infinite sustain. As long as his abilities hit minions, he's just going to heal up. So the way you want to fight against this champion is you want to go for all-ins, not short trades, because trades don't matter. He doesn't have mana, and he heals from his abilities. Every single one. It's so annoying, okay? You got to essentially just get him to push out and not let him escape with his jump. You can actually hook him out of the jump because it's not that fast. So if you're able to understand where he wants to land on, you can just hook the path and you will most likely get him. And once you get him like this, he is dead. But Zack is not a bad matchup because of how tough he is to kill. He's a bad matchup because you can't really trade against him like a normal champion. He doesn't trade. He just heals off of all trades. You're either all or nothing. You just kill him or you're not killing him. That is it. Also, another thing to keep track of, if the Zack um, is missing from your lane and you're pushed up to his turret, be very careful. Because what the Zack wants to do is he's going to hide just outside of vision and he's going to jump like right behind you, ult, and that's going to CC you, knock you into his turret, and clear your whole wave in one go. And at that point, you are as good as dead because you are under his turret, taking turret aggro. So definitely... Don't fall for this. Now, if you can actually hook him out of his jump thing, and you're good enough to do this consistently, then he can't do this to you, right? But it's just there. He can't surprise you and cheese kill you like this, so be very much uh, careful. All right. Um, This is not the best tier list for top lane champions because there's a bunch of champions that just are not here, and there's a bunch of champions that are not top laners here, so I'm not sure what rank the person who made this was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a bunch of champions that I know are top laners, and we're going to represent them with their icons, okay? So I know the icons will look different, but for the sake of the video, please just forgive me, right? <laughs> please forgive me. Okay, so I'm going to have, um, let's see, uh, who looks like Gragas the most? I'd say, let's say, I don't know, let's do Tarek, okay. So this is Gragas. Gragas is an annoying matchup, definitely, because Gragas has sustain. They're going to buy Lost Chapter or Tear and they're going to have no mana problems, so they can constantly just proc that heal and really heal up from your trades. And the worst part, his barrel is such an easy ability to land that he's never going to miss it. So Gragas gets a free source of poke against you, a free source of wave clear so you can't freeze him, and... You can functionally only fight him when he gets into melee range. So your effectiveness against the Gragas scales with his stupidity. So if he's dumb, he'll walk up to for a W and a belly slam, and then you can just very easily kill him. Right? Just ghost up, chase him down. Like Tenacity helps a lot because if he ease you into you, the Tenacity reduces the stun, and they can just hook him out of it and chase him down like a dog. But a smart Gragas will just stay in max range poke you down with Q, and only go for the fight when they know you're going to die to their main combo, okay? Overall, really boring lane, really boring farm lane. You can kind of kill him a few times until level 6, but when he gets his items, it's just, it's not playable, right? It's just boring. Now, it's not a matchup where you're suffocating, you can't do anything. It's not like a vein, right? You can farm, you can chill, right? It's just, you can't kill him, right? And if you're a bit brazen with the poke that you take, he can kill you. So, yeah, definitely watch out for that. Let me see what other champions there are that we might have missed here. Gwen. <clears throat> I'll have Sona be our representative for Gwen because she has blue hair. Gwen is relatively easy for Darius to beat. She's not really that much of a challenge. You beat her level 1 pretty easily, pretty handily. Like, it's just, if you just land your Qs, or even if you don't, if you just RW, whatever, you should be able to, like, maul her. One thing is that, that is really good to do is use your ghost to not get hit by her full Q. Because her Q is like, it's like, it's like it's a few at attacks in a certain duration. So if he goes to run out of it and then go back in, you can avoid a lot of its damage and then just land your Qs or whatever. 
Try not to have her E into your Q, try to set your Q up before you Q. The real threat against Gwen is that her level 6 is so powerful, it's one of those really powerful level 6 prospect champions, that if she's like 2 kills behind, but she lands everything, she has the damage to straight up kill you, okay? Never meathead face tank against this champion. She has the damage. She can be like 2-8 with Riftmaker, and she has the damage to one-shot you in one go with her ultimate. I know it sounds crazy, but it's how it is. So you definitely have to respect her ultimate. If you can get her to waste her ult, that is perfect. Because without ult, she can't do anything, okay? If you can flash her ult, that's also another great thing you can do. Because if you can flash her ult, it's out of the fight. It's nothing. It's something you gotta take care of, okay? Definitely, definitely, definitely don't face tank. Be mobile. Move around. Don't get cheesed by her W. Don't get hit by all of her ultimates. Try your best to dodge her Q, okay? Don't face tank into her. You do kill her. If you are outplay like one, two things, you will kill her. But if you're like like a low rank Darius and you just face tank things, you will get rolled up and destroyed, okay? So definitely don't just sit in lane and take everything, okay? Be mobile, be active, be, you know, movie, all right? Um, what other champion do we miss? Irelia. Okay, I'm gonna put Ire oh, I we did do Irelia actually, so no. Um did I do Nar? I did do Nar. Sorry for this part of the video, <laughs> but it's like there's like 60 top lane champions, so I have to get through all of them. Yeah. Mm. Where's Kisante? Yeah, I didn't do Kisante, yes. Um I'll do Let's do the Kane, because he's a, like a guy, right? This is Kane, Kisante. We'll start with K. Kesante used to be a tough matchup when he was overloaded, right? Kesante was so overloaded back then, but now he's more so kind of just chill and easier to deal with. So, against Kesante, you can't just be kind of brain dead, okay? You have to be like locked in and paying attention because against him, you have to constantly be dodging his cues, okay? If you're able to dodge his cues, you can very easily outtrade him, but if you get hit by them, it does damage, it slows you, so it sets up more of his auto attacks, and he get, the auto attack he gets from the, he puts the mark on you with his Q, and when he auto attacks that, that's higher range, so you get less of a chance to retaliate, so definitely, definitely, definitely try to outplay his Qs, okay? Now, um, he is a tank champion, so he does get too tanky to kill at some point, but a lot of Kesantes will ult you, and this actually puts them in perfect position to kill, okay? When a Kesante ults you, you gotta have your hook ready, you gotta have your Q ready. First off, do not hook into that blocking thing. Do not do that, okay? Either wait for him to use it, or do it so early that he doesn't have time to block it, okay? Do not get your hook blocked, because if you get your hook blocked, it's over. He does so much damage in that form, that he will just straight, like, kill you, okay? You need that hook, because that hook also sets up your Q, okay? And because he's half health already, hook, and you're, you have Noxie Might at this point already because he's a, he's a tank, and the fight would have taken so long up until this point that you already have Noxie Might. Because you have Noxie Might, you can Q, R, W, ult, and that will just straight kill him, all right? So definitely look to end the fight in his um, bruisery form, all right? Sometimes Kesantes will straight up ult prematurely, and this is like the best thing ever because they are removing so much of their own health for you to chop through. They're just removing their own tank stats. So they essentially become a bruiser that can no longer <laughs> survive your damage. <laughs> so yeah, if, if a Kesante premature ults, that can be messed up. But one big thing to pay attention to against Kesante is where he's going to ult you, okay? Because that is very much something that can cheese you and get kills against you when he shouldn't get kills against you. So first off, if you're just outside of his turret, do not get hit by his empowered Q, for the love of God. If you get hit by that, he's going to flip you behind him, push you behind him, and then ult you under his turret. So now you're tanking turret shots, and you're dealing with this jacked Kesante who's jumping around doing the damage he needs to kill you. So don't get ulted under the turret. Walls, okay? Let's say that... His jungler is just just outside a top lane, around like a jungler wall. 
don't underestimate the fact that he can just ult you across a wall. Now you're in river, and the enemy jungle is there to kill you, okay? Definitely don't give him ultimates that can, like, his ult pushes you through walls, right? Doesn't matter how long the wall is. Don't give him good ultimates. In regards to the circumstance, do not give him good ultimates. Just stay in the middle of the lane, avoid his Qs, and even if it does push you back, right? Try your best to kind of move in a position or flash out so that he can't push you back too badly, okay? All in all, Kisada used to be a much larger threat way back when he got released and a while. And for a while he was, he was just a mess to deal with, so overpowered. But they've kind of nerfed him down to the point where he's like balanced. And I, I know that he's a weak champion, but Kisante is not an easy champion to play. I think difficult champions should be like a B tier or something, but I think, I think he's even worse. <laughs> I don't think he's B tier. I think he's even worse than a B tier. <laughs> I think he's like C or like a, not, not a D, he's like a, like a low C tier. But <laughs> I think skillful champions should be lower on tiers, right? So that you have to actually get good at them to play them well. Okay, that's Kesante. Um, what did I miss next? Yon. Um, I guess he's like a samurai, right? Yon is a bit hard to deal with than Yasuo because Yasuo's movement is like there has to be minions for it. Whereas for Yon's movement, whereas for Yon's movement, he just has to press E. Yon's E is such a broken, insane ability that you can't really do too much against if he's just using it to poke you. But the thing is, outside of his E, Yon just straight up dies to you. So if Yon is just like, you're, you're level three, you're both level three, and it's just chilling, and he's letting you land a hook on him, he is dead. First things first, when you hook him, always go for EQ. A good Yon will always E into your Q to dodge it, okay? So always go for EQ. Use your ghost to dodge his Qs, and honestly, you kind of just meathead kill him. Try not to take too much of his R attack poke, not R attack poke, his R attack um, lethal tempo DPS, especially earlier on. Because of lethal tempo, and because he is kind of like Yasuo, and that he's, he gets two R attacks to work with, his R attack and his Q, you kind of lose earlier on, especially if you let him wail on you, and also if you just generally let him wail on you with his R attacks in just a normal fight, he will kill you. But if you use your, if you land your Q, for example, if you use your hook to slow him down and then just kind of walk around him, if you, I don't know, dodge his Q and then maybe don't let him escape with his ultimate, a bunch of this, like these kind of skillful stuff, you can kill him. It's just for Yon to kill you, he has to outplay everything you've got. Okay, so you have to miss your Q, you have to miss your hook, you have to just like, I don't know, you have to use, you have to use everything wrong for him to beat you. Okay, if he's good enough. He can't outplay these things. But, you know, let's be real. Unless the Yon's in-game name starts with Zoo and ends with Kill, they're mostly not good enough. So they're just going to face tank you and you're going to kill them, all right? I'm just putting it at um, Darius' favor because there is some room for them to consistently kill you, okay? There is some annoyingness to their E that you can't do much against, right? So there's that. Let me see if I missed anything else. Um, smolder. <laughs> okay, smolder. Um, creature, smolder. Huh? I'd say smolder is kind of skill matchup, but smolder is like, he's really annoying. Okay, let's just get that out of the way. He's really annoying, and he's got decent range. But the thing is, right, his little flying thing can be slowed, Okay. If you W his little flying thing, he's not going to get out of your range. So if you can consistently hook Smolder, he is a free kill every single time. All right? Now, because Smolder is a ranged top they're going to take Ghost, they're going to take Flash, they're going to take Flea Footwork, so it's going to be tough to land hooks. You can mitigate that by going for, like, a Swifties, or maybe... Because his, his range is low enough to the point where you can actually just consistently land your hooks on him. Like, you can't just walk up and land your hooks. So, I wouldn't say this is a difficult matchup at all, okay? This one is not tough. This one is relatively easy, relatively doable. You just gotta land your hooks. Now, now if you're not killing him, 
there comes in your problem. Because Smolder scales insanely hard. He gets like an Elder Dragon execute that is on permanently. He doesn't activate it, it's just on. So you can't let this champion get out of laning phase with a kill on you. Do not die to him for the love of God, okay? If you look like you're losing, just play safe because this champion will 1v9. He will 1v9, okay? I reiterate, he scales way too crazily for you to allow him to have free reign, all right? So definitely, 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 definitely be careful. All right, that is Smolder. Let's get into Karma, but I kind of explained Karma real quick with the support champion section, so I don't, need, don't think I need to get to him. Um... Twisted Fate top. Let's get into that. Um, let's go looks, I guess. Twisted Fate top is really annoying, okay? Because they're going to go to AD, and ADTF top is such a nightmare because with normal Twisted Fate, his attack speed is slow enough to the point where you can hook him while he's gold carding you. You can't do that against ADTF. His attack speed is fast enough to the point where he just gold cards you and gets away. Functionally, because of that point and click, no counterplay stun, and because he will go Ghost, Fleet Footwork, and Flash, there is nothing you can do to kill this guy in lane, okay? If you land your hooks, he's dead. But, but I, I don't really imagine it's even possible to land your hooks against him, because he can just, like, he can toss his gold card and run away before you're even in hook range, okay? So... Try to look out for um, hooks if you can. If he uses his card, like a blue card on a wave, that's your opening, okay? If he, or if he accidentally taps the wrong card, or if you're walking up to him and he's still cycling through his cards and he's not at gold card yet, you have a tiny bit of a leeway to actually land your hook on him. It's all about his gold card. You gotta play around it. You gotta manage to try to get a hook on him when he doesn't have it in his hand to throw it at you. And... When he does stun you with his gold card, you gotta, let's say you, you hooked him, but he has stunned you. You want to W as soon as you get out of your hook, get out of your gold, uh, gold card stun, okay? Because he's going to ghost, and he's going to run away from you with Mach 10, okay? You want to ghost as soon as possible. No RW, just ghost. I mean, I mean you want to W as soon as possible and ghost, obviously. But you want to W as soon as possible so that it does slow him and gives you the room to get into a better position to walk up and then try killing him, Okay. The bad part about TF is that his ultimate does make him a huge threat on the top side of the map, not the bot side, but he's going to be a bit of a nightmare for your team to deal with, and you can't really match him, right? So, it's not a good champion to fight, right? He's definitely overpowered right now, definitely an OP champion. ADTF needs nerfs stat. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, let me see if there's another champion that I might have missed uh we did do we do garen oh my god i think we missed garen seriously how can this list not have garen okay <laughs> all right wait let me just make sure that i missed him because i'm not so good at differentiating colors yeah, of course he's not here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, Demacia, Shavana, let's do Garen. Okay, so Garen is very much Darius favored. He's basically a free kill in lane, and the reason he's a free kill is this one thing. All of his damage is his E, okay? So if you land a W before he Qs on you, or if you hook him, or if you have Ghost, the best case scenario, if you have Ghost, he is dead, okay? If you have Ghost, there's nothing he can do to land his E. Now, be very careful, because if the Garen is smart, he will spin as he's trying to get away. Because if you want to keep up with him and damage him, you're going to get a melee range with him, but that will make you his highest damage spin target. And that might put you in range for him to ignite kill in one go. You don't want to let him do that, okay? You want to make sure to stay out of his spin range. Do not underestimate its damage under any circumstance. No matter how much damage you think his spin does, it does more than you think. Which is why if you avoid it, 
Garen can't do anything to stop you from killing him. Even his buffed W duration doesn't really do much to stop you from killing him, okay? Just do not get hit by a full spin. If you have no choice but to, but to get hit by a spin, the best you can do is stay in your minions so that you're not the closest target. It does the most damage to the closest target, or at least maybe they change that. I'm not too sure they keep changing champion mechanics for a reason, but it does the most damage to the closest target, okay? But make sure he's not spinning while he has full move speed. Okay, use your W to make sure that he's slowed. Go for Qs. And this really isn't a matchup that you should have too much trouble with in lane. But the trouble comes in outside of lane. Because Garen's ultimate can execute you from like 30% health. And that can seriously stop you from carrying games. He can, like, despite the fact that you've beaten him, he will be there if he's in that fight to stop you from carrying. Because when you're fighting Fed Champions, let's say you're 1v9, you're fighting Fed Champions, you will get low HP, because Fed Champions have damage. But instead of being the, having the chance to go for a Q when you're low health, and getting that one kill, you're gonna just die, because the Garen will ignite you and ult you, and you're dead like that. So, while Garen is an easy matchup to, matchup to get fed off of, and while you can get a lot of work done with that lead, if you're good enough, if your team is not strong enough to help you, if the enemy team is strong enough to actually DPS it down quickly, if the Garen has dedicated his entire existence to making sure that he does not want you playing this game, if all these ifs line up, then you can't carry the game. He will just straight up steamroll you, stop you from carrying, and it is a complete and utter nightmare. There's nothing you can do about it. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could just try to, like, you could try to kite the Garen in team fights, or let's say he's on one side of the, the river, for example, you could just try to go fight on the other side, make sure that um, you're away from him so that you're fighting someone else, and then you're only fighting when you have your Noxamite, by the time you do that, you are killing people, but, you know, that kind of takes situational decision making, so no, no non-flanky front-to-back fight, it's, he, he, he gets the power to really mess you up, that silence messes you up that ultimate messes you up ignite he, he can just really try his best to make sure you're not having a good time um up next let's talk about cassiopeia a matchup that we forgot about i'm gonna do katarina here they're both noxine right cassio is a hardcore darius counter there is practically nothing you can do because if she lands one q she gets the ability to run you down like a dog but if she misses one Q, nothing happens to her. She can consequence free, spam you with Qs, and nothing happens to her. Now, to actually beat her in an all in, you have to dodge every single Q in that all in. Because I'm not joking, if the all in starts melee range, but she lands every single Q, she will kill you in melee range. That's not a joke. She will kill you in melee range. It's a disgusting thing to happen. but. It will happen. So, you gotta be on your A game dodging wise and dodge every single Q. A life hack is to get Boots of Swifties because with Boots of Swifties, you can sorta of just get better at dodging your Qs and you can move more quickly out of her W Miasma. Her W is a bit of a mess. You wanna get out of it as, as quickly as possible. But if the Cassio is smart, she will queue in front of you to the area we're trying to we're trying to walk out. Like, let's say you're trying to leave in like, let's say that this button is the miasma and you're trying to leave like this. She's gonna queue in front of you right here. So, like, try your best to not get hit by the queue that she's gonna do in her miasma. If you can dodge her ultimate, that is really perfect too, right? Just try to look at her abilities, right? You guys just watch Cassiopeia's model and learn her animations. Her kind of ultimate animation is kind of like, like, like a, like kind of like a screen kind of thing, right? She moves her hands and stuff, so really keep your eye out for that. It is really fast, but there is a wind-up animation to keep an eye out for, so really keep your reflexes on, on point. It's not just RNG, it is reflexes, and keep in mind that she's not gonna use it when you're gonna face away from her. A thing you can do is you can face away from her while queuing, so you don't get hit by it too. But I think that's a bit of a buggy kind of thing. I'm not too, too I have had situations where I'm facing away from her and the game still stuns me with her ultimate. So 
it's it's not the most consistent ability in terms of game mechanics too so i'll just add that in there as well ultimately speaking this is a lane where you're playing safe and you're not doing too much and you could try to just scale up or whatever but it really depends on your skill level right if you're good enough go swifties dodge her cues and try your best to kill her but she's one of those champions where even if she's behind if she lands those cues she will end up killing you and there's nothing you can do about it okay so really messed up champion really messed up matchup not much you can do about it except just try to dodge things and outplay literally everything in her kit and if you don't outplay one thing doesn't matter how behind she is she will kill you now on the bright side you can try to outdo her in team fights so there's that right you don't necessarily have to just meet head fight her the whole time you could try to like you know um help her team out in the river in fights and stuff but depending on the enemy team composition and also your team composition she may or may not be more useful than you it all depends on the specific situation you're in and that i think is virtually every single top laner right um i can't think of anyone else so i'll leave it at that right a lot of champions a lot of matches discussed um yeah that's it that's all of them okay this was a long long video man like the match i know i record four hour videos ish normally and this is only three hours but man playing the game and commentating over it is much more easier than actually sitting here and just generating information for three hours <laughs> so yeah i'll see you boys in the next video peace out